it's not my real voice. Cigar Hound Dog, DJ from Pick Jimmy, Master Your Ash, John from Cigar Alchemist, EKB from the Vintage Cigar. What you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe you can do anything? Thanks for tuning into the big broadcast. Bye bye. Broadcast. And now, the new wave presents the infamous smoke show. And we're live. Oh, that Damn. intro gets me every Damn. time. Right. Exciting. Well, what's right. up? We uh, we have our, our guest on tonight, Mike. I don't even want to try to pronounce your last name from yes. Pal- from Palestine Cigars. Yes. How's it going, man? It's going it's going well, man. I have uh, I'm currently hosting a birthday party for my soon to be 11 year old son. So I have 75 kids inside of my house um whoa i'm, I'm probably no it's, it's realistically like five but uh, the, <laughs> just feels uh, that way yeah at this point yeah. at this current moment you know uh, my wife and i have come to terms that we're just gonna lock ourselves out and you know when things are done and then like kind of it's like zombie apocalypse you know when it kind of clears out we'll go in and reassess and see what's there <laughs> drywall see the damage. yeah yeah, yeah. Damn, that was dude. me two weeks ago oh, i know it you know, you had you had a zombie apocalypse or a birthday party? Birth, both, same thing. Both. <laughs> Very nice. So, what are we talking about, That's fellas? Funny, Let's man. go, man. Let's do this. Is it, it is first very, of all very free flowing? We we don't. So yeah, but what, what are you gonna say, John? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. I like that we're it's all. Very, it's very fl- it's very free flowing. We yeah. we don't have any script or anything. So, you know, it's, it's say whatever you want. Just don't get us kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> that's, that's all oh. we ask. <laughs> I think the only thing I could really kick you off and get off of, kicked off of YouTube is if I'm mentioning like ads or something, uh, you know, I you think that's probably the best sure, place to start. I'm, yeah. I'm sure that there, there's, there's other stuff, but yeah, that, you know, not, not, not a bad start. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's kind of funny to me is, uh, you know, so obviously I have my own podcast as well. We do a cigar hustlers podcast and, one of our episodes all of a sudden you couldn't comment on it anymore so like they're going yeah, on this whole tangent happening. yeah <clears throat> and we don't and we don't take it we have zero ads so there's it's you know sponsor free and i mean i'm a big believer in doing that because i i have i have a lot of opinions about people in the cigar industry or, or things that they're doing uh, sometimes and i like to be kind of just freelance or if i think that the, their cigar is a miss i will say hey this is not good and here's why or or i may say hey this is great but i just want everybody to think that it's not you know biased by funding sure yeah and and also the thing is like if you had if you had ads on your videos how much would you make from them anyways you know it's like i i had uh i had shorts monetized for a little bit i was making like off off of a short that would get like ten thousand views i'd make five cents you know who cares <laughs> at that at that yeah it's like because i know they they allow some monetization for cigar content but right. they make it to a point to where it's just it's nonsensical to do it there's just there's mm. there's no benefit from it well but is, I, I like your approach though yeah i mean this is more along the lines of and this section is brought to you by perdello yeah. you know like whatever. yeah 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 so um, for sure you know, and I'm not knocking. I, you know, I love a lot of these other media guys in the industry. They do a great job, and uh, you know, you can knock them here. It's okay. I knock them. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, it's, listen, I got to be honest. Um, I'm more of a knock in, in in front of you, like in person on your own per, your podcast. Um, sure. Like I have, like that's more of my approach. Um, so <clears throat> it's not as much fun when you. Now I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. This could, that could very well happen here. <laughs> it's. But it's yeah. not my intention to be like, hey, guess what? This is, uh, you know, like I'm going to, yeah. I just, I always say how I feel. I say, you know, I'm a b- big believer in living like that. I, be- I'm, I'm a, I believe in authenticity and, sure. you know, and I, th- I really believe that that's why I'm really kind of catapulting into the direction that I'm going. And, you know, <clears throat> the Postani Cigars has been, we've been out for 10 years. Uh, that's a long time for me personally. 
we sell out every year, which is great. And the problem is that we're not close to where we need to be. Right. So uh, what happens is, you know, you're, you, we produce, I, I couldn't even tell you the number. I, I could tell you that we spend about almost half a million dollars at this point annually. Right. Uh, that was our last check. And, you know, we realistically make production. We, we have an opportunity to make production one time a year. Uh, hopefully that'll change because uh, that would make my life a little bit easier. But, you know, you make them, then you kind of sell out through, sell them out within about a six month period or so, six or seven month period. And then you say, okay, I need more. And then, you know, and then you say, now I have more money because I sold everything. Right. So, yeah. Uh, it's been a 10 year process to kind of get where I'm at, but the the reason why that is, is because I will be beholden to no one. I'll can just continue to reinvest in myself. My brother's my partner and we continue to kind of keep rolling and rolling and rolling. So uh, yeah. the, I believe that the goal is to, to hit somewhere around 3 million bucks. If you get, if you got 3 million liquid, you should be able to produce around a million cigars ish. I mean, who the fuck knows at this point, man, with, with, can I curse? I can curse on this, right? Yeah, yeah, we're two minutes past. It. You're good. Fuck it, hey, go for it. <laughs> cool. Fuck yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, who knows with with the way pricing goes, dude? You know, uh, we all kind of got whacked on the head the past two years with stuff. It's been fucking crazy. Um, but hey, man, it's just it's part of the beast. So, whatever. Oh. Yeah. So, Mike, what are we smoking tonight? Do you want to hold it up to the uh, the camera? Show everybody what. Yes. I am smoking the Postania Justice, the five and a half by forty-six Connecticut Corona Gorda. I, uh, this is this is oh, this is one chocolatey <laughs> ass Connecticut. I gotta I gotta say, this is like really chalk like for it's a Connecticut and it's really chocolatey. That's not what you expect. I gotta tell oh, you guys, I can do it too. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you guys, I'm so fucking impressed right now that you guys are all smoking the Postania Connecticut. You have no idea. Whatever I, 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 and now here, here you go. Here's my shit talking. How about that cigar? I go on Coop. I go on, you know, all these other guys. And, you know, there'll be one or two other guys like, yeah, I'm smoking the Postania or whatever it is, the Habano, the Brawley, whatever. But there's always somebody that's smoking some other shit that has nothing to do with us. And I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, well, you know, I couldn't get it locally. I'm like, there's 75 websites that have it. I don't, you're like, what? What do you mean? You know, don't give me a break. You knew I was coming on. We scheduled this 90 days ago. Stop it right now. Mm. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Talking about you, yeah. Matt Ty, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> they're my oh, dudes, man. and they're good guys. So thanks, thanks for sending them, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, yeah, I'm, uh, you. I'm, you know, I'm trying to do better at things. I believe every year, man, you really have to evolve, right? And um, for a lot of this, I have been a one man army as far as sales, as far as media, as far as website development, blend development. My brother's my partner and <clears throat> and he has and he does some things. Don't get me wrong. But it, man, 10 years of doing Postania, things have just really kind of accelerated for, for my tasks and my role. And now I've looked at things where I'm like, OK. We got to start bringing some things in. We got to start bringing some people in. You got to start doing things differently because I can't call retailers, work on cigars, work on, you know, infrastructure for Salesforce, work on making, you yeah. know, taking care of media. And then, you know, and, and to be honest, doing all of those things, it pays us nothing. So like, all right, now how else are we, now how are we going to pay our bills? So like we have the retail shop. It's like, okay, so email blast for that. You know, making sure those products are done, making sure your employees are good, making sure you're planning for events, making sure you have inventory on that aspect of things. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Sure. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So a lot of work, uh, man. Yeah. So like, you know, brand. I, yeah, no shit, dude. And um, so I say all that just to say, look, I try and get better every year and, you know, I'm going to do a better job of making sure that you guys are know what's going on and I'm going to try my best to make sure that I put the cigars in your hands uh, prior to them being released or whatever the case may be. So I want you guys to try them. I want you to experience them and I want honest feedback, you know, because not every cigar is going to be for every person. Some people are going to be like, eh, I, you know, this is a miss for me. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I work with a company that has great tobacco, you know, and mm -hmm. I, 
we have totally different visions when it comes to blends and cigars sometimes um skip and i we have our arguments but you know the what's funny for me about skip is like a lot of people uh love him or hate him but he's telling you his opinions because they're genuine like that's how he feels yeah. you know mm -hmm. and yeah. if you if you had that authenticity across the board with everybody oh my god dude we would be making so much more progress as a society dude <laughs> So no, I think no. that uh, I think that Matt, you've been to Nico Sueño, correct? Yes, and he's and, you, know, see, you know obviously you know Skip way more than I do, but at least he's very opinionated. He's yeah. hyper intelligent, and he's yep. he's very civically minded. And you know <laughs> yeah, those are way of saying those it. are things like you can you can get into like so many different topic conversation and conversations and arguments with him. But like you said, he's sincere. He, he's not bullshitting with anything. Yeah. He's, he's genuine. Yeah, man. You know, he critiques people. I think that he critiques people uh, too often because the reality is the only, the only people who I like to critique are my friends, hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, those are the guys that I really want to see do better. And, um, know that what I'm saying is totally genuine. If you don't know me or you don't know me well enough, then you might not think that. So, sure. yeah. So, you know, it's always it's always comical to me to see somebody like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said this or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, look, you don't have to agree with him. He's just speaking from his heart and he's, he's telling you how he feels, you know. So yeah. whatever, man. Um, <laughs> connoisseur, connoisseur cigar, Eric. Dude, that is like a, a tough question when you're asking the guy that makes the cigar because you're saying like, hey, pick your best kid. Um, yeah. That's my daughter, by the way. <laughs> He is my best kid. She's my favorite. Um, so I can pick as well. It's, it's really not that hard. You know, yeah. here's the thing. When I start my day, I start with the Pilsana Connecticut Toro. Okay. Uh, now that the justice is out, that'll probably change a little bit. I'll probably smoke a little bit of that Corona Gorda. As I progress through the day, I then definitely move to the War Bear Corona Gorda. Uh, then I do a Habano. Sometimes I do two war bears and I skip the habano. Sometimes I do the habano and then I'll do a habano toro and I'll and I'll just do one war bear. Then on the ride home, yeah. I smoke a broadleaf toro. So uh, I smoke all three blends every day, every day. Sometimes I'll throw an SBC in there. Uh, that's a little more, um, I don't know. It's a little a little more expensive. It's a little more fancy, I guess, or my LE, but. I'm a big believer in making my thing, making the core line stuff fantastic and smoking that is what I like to do. So that's dope. What, what was the first, what was the first cigar that you came out with? Uh, the, first the first cigar first I came out with was the Habano. <coughs> okay. So, so I blended that cigar in Nico Sueño and, uh, you know, look, when you work with a good factory, a lot of that hard work is done already. So, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't acquire the tobacco on my own. That is actually something that I'm kind of fascinated in. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I'm having these internal questions as far as what I want to do and how far I want to go down this rabbit hole and uh, like learning a little bit more about the growing process and identifying specific tobaccos, yeah. you know, uh, some of you guys have been down there and you see that it's kind of like, you kind of get like this Disneyland tour of things, especially if you do like the Drew estate things or some of these other guys like, and this is where we put our tobacco in the barn. Right. And this is the mm -hmm. cure. process. If you hang Make out long enough, romantic as possible. Yeah, yeah. You hang out long enough, you go to some places where there's you got these giant rollers with these heating things. Like, what's that? Oh, that's where where we uh, dry the tobacco. I'm like, oh no, that's where they cook it to process it faster. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, which is fine, dude. That's look, that's part of this game. It's part of this industry. Like, you know, those things have to happen. At the end of the day, you know, there's only so much really high end tobacco. And there's so much more of the plant. So, and there's going to be a market for all of it, whether it's in a lower price point, whether it's got to be dressed up. You know, I, I like to use the 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 saying of, you know, you can dress up tilapia, and people will eat it. You know, you go to different restaurants, and it, it, like, I believe in that same as, essence when it comes to some of these lower grade tobaccos. You know, and not even that. There's even there's even lower ends where you say, hey, look, this is your bundle. Poof, you know. They're four bucks a stick or whatever. This is, and here you go. Enjoy. And like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. Okay, if that works for you, then that works for you. So, yeah. mm -hmm. 
I don't know what your question was. I went on a tangent there. <laughs> no, you're good. It's all good. But, you're good. So, but, so like, what, how long how long were you in retail doing Cigar Hustler? How long have, were you doing that? And then what kind of made you want to get into it? Was it a relationship like previously with Skip that kind of drew you into wanting to make your own cigar? Or was that just there from the beginning? Uh, no, you know, uh, for me, everything has always been by necessity. You know, I, I would love to tell you that I have been passionate about cigars and blah, blah, blah. There's all this other bullshit. <laughs> so not true, man. Uh, I owned, the, my brother and I owned a gas station and we sold it. That, that shit is a rough, rough gig, man. <laughs> so uh, we got the hell out of it as fast as we could once we were, you know, I mean, I was stressed out of my mind. I would say that I'm almost as stressed. I was stressed out of my mind then as I am now. But now think, you know, everything's, uh, there's Bigger more. scale. Yeah, there's more on the line at this point, right? I got three little yeah. mouths to feed and, you know, uh, employees and everybody else is kind of dependent on me. So, you know, I can understand that pressure, right? Like I have a why mm -hmm. or there was no why. I was like, this is fucking insanity. So uh, we opened up this this store after we sold that we opened up this vacant. There was a vacant store across the street. I'm like, oh, the rent's cheap. I'm like, let's do a tattoo parlor and a head shop because there's great <laughs> market. There's great margin in glass. Yeah. And I mean, mm -hmm. you're just drawing on people. We can get tattoo artists in here. This is going to be amazing. So um, city of Deltona wouldn't let us do tattoos. It was, you know, you had to be specifically zoned for that because, you know, tattoos <laughs> are the devil, cigars are the, it's all, it's all very evil stuff. So, sure, um, sure. <laughs> so people started coming in asking for cigars and it's like, Oh yeah, you, you, this was a cigar store two or three years ago. So you know, do you have any cigars? I'm like, no. So we just started from there, right? And yeah. as we kind of developed, we started gaining some popularity qu pretty quickly. You know, now you're going back 15 years. So what was going on 15 years ago? You had your CI, you had your major websites that you know were producing and selling cigars at a high volume, but you didn't have a lot of smaller retail shops having websites. So I was yeah. like, hey, you know what? I'm going to build a website. And my brother's like, dude, that's so dumb. You know, you don't have millions of dollars. How are you going to compete against these other guys and stuff like that? I'm like, I don't know, man, but I feel like we can figure out a way to provide better customer service. We'll start, you know, and we'll go this route. Let's, let's give this a shot. And, and it developed and it started to work. Right. And then Instagram kind of just jumped on the scene. I'm like, I bet you I can meet more people if I go on Instagram. Right. So yeah. I started, and this is when things were very simple. Right. So I looked up hashtag cigar. I would like people's pictures. I would comment on them. I would, I would learn things about them. I would do this every hour till it would max out. Right. Like a psycho. I would do this. And then I learned about, and, and this wasn't me just saying click, 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 click done. Like I would learn the names. I would learn the people. Paid I would attention. Un yeah. You know, like I'm involved. Right. Uh, yeah. To this day, you know, I still am involved. So, you know, and I've made friends because of that practically in every state at this point. So I did that and I, you know, my followers shot through the roof <clears throat> and I was doing fantastic, right? Things were going really well. Um, then, a, then I had a big brand come into the shop. We did a huge event. It was successful. And then I had a retailer shut it down. Like he was, he had a problem with it. So all of a sudden I struggled to get inventory. All of a sudden, you know, like it's funny when you have these capitalist guys, I'm a capitalist, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. but they're really just these fascist pricks. And, you know, they're, <laughs> they want to try and dictate things when the things don't go their way. So I'm like, you know what? I need to create something that they can't control. So I made my own cigar. And once we made our own cigar, I had already established more friends that were already retailers. Like, well, I, I want to carry it. I want to support you. And then that turned into you know, post distribution. And then all of a sudden some of those guys started making cigars and like, Hey, will you handle distribution for me? I'm like, absolutely. Of course I will. So that was, re that's really the kind of the trajectory of how things have gone, you know, and I made some mistakes along the way. I keep learning as I go, but you know, I, I think that that's just kind of the, 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 the track that you go and nothing is straight up. Uh, you, you, uh, you kind of develop and, you know, make mistakes along the way. I'm not afraid to make them, you know, cause I know that I'm genuine yeah. in everything that I do. Like that's, I think that's the big difference. You know, it's mm -hmm. really easy to say, I'm going to start something and then either intentionally or unintentionally get shady to try and make a buck or whatever the case may be. And then you try and back that out or try and 
uh, say, justify why you did it for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden, you know, you lose that authenticity. Once that authenticity is lost, the customer knows the authenticity is gone and, you know, bullshit will only take you so far. So yeah. here I am, man, 15 years <laughs> of sanity, yep. going strong and just trying to get better every year. Just trying to get better every year. It beats so just the like, gas what, station, it? though. Yeah. Oh, sure. Shit. Yeah, I'm sure it does. It beats just the gas station. <laughs> oh, my God. Just the gas station would be kind of remedial <laughs> at this point. Dude. Dude. You know what? I, I was going to save this story for my podcast. Podcast. I'm gonna tell you. You know, like I always think. I'm always worried about. You feel bad for the family-owned shop, the guy that's busting his ass. You know, he sticks his kids in there to work too, and whatever the case may be. And I really feel for those guys because I've been on. I've seen it. It's hard. It is not fun at all. <clears throat> so I just went to Enterprise Alabama and I released the Postonia, Connecticut Justice at Bull Weevil. Because I love Steven. He owns a uh, humidor fine cigars in Dalton, Alabama, too. Super nice. There you go, Juan. There you go, Juan. No, there you go, Juan. There's your answer. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> so <laughs> like how you, I like how you put that in there. I, I you know, I didn't even see Juan's comment. So I'm yeah. so that worked out that worked out fantastic. Um, yep. so I, I went I went there and as I'm driving home, I'm just kind of cruising. I'm not really thinking about things or whatever, and you just kind of zone out and like the ride home is always better than the ride up, you know, and I'm thinking about the event and, you know, we met some awesome dudes and like, I can't wait to get home to be with my wife and kids. And I'm just, and I'm like, Oh, Oh, I got like 30 miles and I'm on E. Uh, mm. So Shit. I, you know, I'm like, okay. So there's an exit probably about 10 miles up. So it's getting kind of tight. Right. I'm like, okay, pull off. And there's two gas station options. One is right to the right, it's 0.1 miles. One's right to the left, 0.1 miles to the left. I'm like, okay, I'll go to the right. Pull off, go to get gas. Uh, and my car takes premium, of course. So I go to put in premium. I hit the gas thing and it goes, and it drops like 20 cents in the tank. And I'm like, right. something's wrong here. So I'm like, dur, 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 dur. okay, uh, this pump must be broken. Hang it up, go to another pump, do the same thing, hit it. This time, nothing. It gives me zero of anything, right? So I go inside and I go, hey, are you guys out of premium? Because I just tried, I just tried pumping. And the guys, and this guy looked like he was an owner. Mm -hmm. He's like, really? And I said, yeah. Uh, yeah, I tried it and it didn't work at the first pump. So I went to the second pump. He goes, oh, you went to the second pump? And now I'm like, uh -oh. I'm like, yeah, and it didn't work. Are you? He goes, huh. I said, oh, okay, are you guys out of premium? He goes, guess we are. Yeah, and right. Like, you <laughs> motherfucker. I was this close <laughs> to going Michael Douglas fucking <laughs> falling down, destroying yeah. the entire – I'm like, I bet you I could wreck this entire fucking place and get the hell out of here before anybody knows the whys. You know, but <laughs> hell my composure, dude. And I'm like, why don't you just put a sign up or at least be a poly like, Hey man, really sorry about that. Yeah. We're out of premium. Like I get it. This shit happens. You don't have to be a dick to me right? because yeah. you're out of gas, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Fuck this guy. Um, from that, you know, <laughs> went, went, went up the street to the next place. Thank God there was another one on that, on that exit. And you know, they had gas. Unbelievable. But like, I couldn't believe yeah. that this fucking guy was, you know, like I was the shit bag. I'm like, and I'm not even, I'm not going, I, if I went in there hot or like pissy or I had some yeah. type, I would get it. You know, I, exp I totally expect if I'm being shitty to be matched by somebody else's being, you know, I'm going to be shitty too. Let's be shitty together. Yeah, get right? matched. Sure. Yep. yep. I, I, that wasn't me at all. And like, not even remotely close. I'm like, fuck man, dude, put a sign up dick, you know, like out premium. <laughs> I'm fucking believable. Yeah. You don't have those problems, Michael, do, do you? Master What's that? Ash. You don't uh, have those problems. <laughs> I mean, my my, my world is my, my world is definitely about matching everybody else's intensity. It's uh, huh. without a doubt. Uh, working in the liquor industry. I'm just saying that because yeah, you drive a Tesla. Yeah, he was talking oh, about your oh, Tesla. Oh, yeah, that's what oh, I thought. Oh, that, that totally <laughs> went over my head, bro. Yeah, yeah. no. I, I actually, you know, funny story though. 
so there is a 7-Eleven that I like to frequent by my house because I love supporting 7-Eleven. And the franchise is owned by a Chinese guy named Mike from Brooklyn, okay. right? And he is my absolute favorite person to talk to because <laughs> he has that East Coast, like, it's everybody's fault. Your yes. problems are your problems. They are not my problems. If you come in here and act shitty, I act shitty right back to you. So when I go in there, I'm like, hey, Mike, what's up? Usually his mom is working the counter. Or they keep it very, very clean in there. I love them. And shout out to Mike and his mom. Um, and his brother works nights. <laughs> shout his out brother, to Mike's mom. <laughs> yeah. His brother's name is Steve. Steve is a diehard Yankees fan, as is Mike. But he always plays at night the uh, whatever the recap on ESPN or whatever radio station it is, right? Mike complains about Steve. Steve complains about Mike how shitty the other one is at doing their job. I mean, it is sure. phenomenal, right? And then they complain about all the customers. So <laughs> I always ask Mike whenever I go in there, I'm like, yeah, Mike, you know, here's my Slurpee or here's my, slu you know, whatever I'm, whatever I'm getting for the day. And uh, I'm just like, hey, Mike, man, how was your day? And he's like, ah, same as yesterday, man. This one guy comes in here thinking that he owns the place or, you know, like I had to kick out a bum over here. And, you know, it just turns into this five-minute story that I get to entertain myself with. So I, I totally... Right. Uh, empathize and, and understand. The funny thing about that 7-Eleven, though, there are no gas pumps. I would mm. imagine how much convenient. more unhinged he would be had he had to deal with that. Oh, yeah. Mm. And that's oh. my story about Mike and the gas station. That's fantastic, dude. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> the only super story... Random. I'm, I'm super random. Uh, this is way out of what everybody's talking Let's about. Go. Does go. anybody else have purple ash? My ash is purple. purple. Yeah, I don't know if you, you're probably not going to be able to see it if you do oh, no, we'll it. on it. Put you on the big screen. Oh, Mine just dropped and burnt the shit out of my leg, but it was not purple. It's, it's purple, yo. That's it, magic. It's tobacco, you got anything, man. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen purple ash before. Listen, you got a special one, okay? Uh, yes. Yeah. Golden ticket. <laughs> I'm, like I'm, I'm using my camera right now, so I can't like take a picture of the shit. I've never seen purple ash before, man. It's like purple specks. It's a whole purple... Thing going on. I've never seen that before. So I was like, No, you can't be. I just got my, my hands dirty for nothing, bro. No, nah, man. <laughs> no, no, you sure? That, yeah, I got, I got the Willie Walker right here. The you, Willie Walker you, justice. You sure you didn't eat, eat some mushrooms over there, Keelan, or something? <laughs> I wish I did. I mean, maybe, maybe it's, uh, you know, <laughs> some, some the Japanese, some kimchi or something in here. I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen that before. Berries taste like snozberries. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> First time for uh, announcement for the world right now. If you find a justice with purple ash, you get one of the Polish bears. That's it. You, you get a, <laughs> a private tour in Nikas when you these motherfuckers don't think I'm crazy, yo, because I know like I'm looking at this shit right now. It's still purple, yo. I've never seen that shit before. <laughs> we need the fireworks animation. How did we do yeah, that yeah. last time? I got like That's a few thumbs up. Oh, the yeah. thumbs up? It's not yeah. working for me. I don't have that apple phone. I don't have that whack ass apple shit. <laughs> None of that. Nothing's happening. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but Mike, uh, like, what's the what's the blind on, on the Connecticut? What what is the blind on this one? So it's a Connecticut wrapper, obviously, and it has a Pennsylvania broadleaf binder with Nicaraguan fillers. So I wanted to make sure. Here's what's cool is like. Look, you try and learn from everybody, right? And I, you know, I wanted to make a cigar that had extreme body. And so you look at some of the other Connecticut's that are on market, and the only only other there's two that I really liked, right? Uh, the EC, which I think was absolutely fantastic, the Intemperance, and the High Claire. So, you know, I I'm fortunate enough where I get to talk to these guys, you know. So uh, uh, Nick will run from me, Nick Melillo Foundation, and rightfully so because I mean I, I would be terrified too. But, you know, he, he we were talking about his blend and stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, Brazilian Matafita binder. I'm like, ah, I get it. So we need so when we're doing this, we want something to be uh, right. We want to yeah. really jam it up. So I'm like, I'm going to roll Pennsylvania Broadleaf and see how this develops. Right. So you want something that's totally different. And like what's important is that and I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be emulated. You're going to see this, you know, in six months or, you know, come to the end of the year, someone else is going to do it. You're going to say, oh, Ecuador and Connecticut, Pennsylvania. And that's fine. You know, it's like, oh, I wonder where you got that idea from. So 
like yeah. that doesn't bother me at all. I, but I, but at I always want to. I strive to make something different. I strive to make a blend that doesn't taste like anything else, right? So it's always fascinating to me when when people smoke my cigar and I'm doing a van or whatever, and they tell me what it what it is or how they feel what it what it tastes like or whatever. You know, I like it when somebody oh this one's really mild. I'm like, damn, okay. Okay. Yeah, really? Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you huffing on gas before you came over? I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, but you get what's fascinating, dude, is you get all over the place responses, man. All for the over. same thing. Yeah, yeah. it, it yeah. is absolutely. Yeah. I see what you're going for here. Like, okay, what was I going for? Just you know, something really, <laughs> really, really light but sweet. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I get I get a kick out of that, man. And uh, Cigarhead, it's Stepan Kevich. Stepan Kevich is my last just name. Like that. Just like that. Just like just that. Just like that. Just like that. It's as easy as Prisdale, bro. It's as easy as Prisdale. Yeah. <laughs> I was close. I was going to guess it. I was going to guess uh, Shashev Pen, uh, Penkevich, but it's not. You were not right close. there, John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, man, don't don't apologize. You're good to go, bro. Look, there's Dude. like minimal vowels in that bitch. What do you, you know? <laughs> I'm a big uh, MMA fan, and there's some really good Polish fighters, and so yeah, I've, I've Polish hammer, pronounce some of them. Yeah, yeah, yep. So and and uh, Kavl, uh, Kavlkevitz, uh mm -hmm. was a woman woman fighter. Yeah, she was really good. So she was. Who's yeah. the fuck? Who's the who's the sorry? Uh, switching to boxing. Who's the the low blow. Watch guy. that view count just plummet. <laughs> the, so the the low the guy the guy that that uh shit I forget his name. Polish. UFC's a gainer. Uh, UFC's a gainer. Right. Yeah. yeah. But Hockey's bo boxing. I'm I don't shit. I'm before, his... when he fought like Tyson, he used to do the quick. Or, like, I know. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of his name right now. He, he caused he caused a riot in MSG. He caused a riot in MSG. Like I remember, like he was doing low blow after low blow. I say his name started with a G. So it's a complete side note. I'm just fucking, you know, just something. If only there was know, a Galata. 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 That's and his Galata. name. Galata. That's that's who is who I was thinking about. Sorry, completely pointless, you know, tidbit, but you know, just had to throw that in there. <laughs> that's a that's a Polish, that's a Polish uh sports person <laughs> I'm familiar with. <laughs> the guy who throws low blows. It's tapped in. <laughs> and, and, Fantastic, Matt. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Let me find the cheater. Dude, I gotta tell you, man. Uh, Eddie cheated. Fuck that guy. I mean, fuck Polish. I mean, oh, wait, 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 anyways. You know. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. I uh, I love it when brands come out with Corona Gorda, man. Like, it's my favorite size. So I, I always love seeing Corona Gorda added to a line. Oh, yeah. Dude. That draw well too. That also draw yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, you know me too, man. You know it's it's one of my favorite sizes, right? Uh, I would say that, you know, realistically, I smoke a lot more Toros at this point, uh, more for just because of time, you know. And I light up the cigar, and realistically, I can probably huff through the Toro by the time I get to the shop, right? It takes about thirty minutes, for, you know, sometimes. So. Yeah. But as far as taste and flavor profile, I love the Corona Gordas, man. That's why when I made SBCs, I always made them in Corona Gordas, you know, because I really feel like you get to do so much more with it. And it really gives a specific flavor profile that's bar none and any other size. But what was really kind of cool about this blend is I blended it in the Corona Gorda first. And then I said to the factory, hey, let's make these other sizes. You have the blend. Go. You go. Mm. And so when I when that Toro hit, you don't know what you're going to expect because I know how full that Corona Gordon was, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and for me, that Toro was just so good. I'm like, okay, I, I can smoke this. Uh, I will. I will smoke this now more often. So, yeah. But this one's really special to me. You know, it's got my son's name on it. When I showed him the first time, he didn't give a shit. So I had to make a whole. I had to make a whole Instagram reel about it. And then he's like, oh, oh. Once he realized that he could use it as leverage or something to brag about <laughs> the other other siblings, like, but do you have a cigar named after you? You know, then he felt good, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. I, I'm sure he'll appreciate it more and more uh, as he as he gets older. But as he yeah. gets older, I gotta say, For man, sure. dude, this this has got some kick to it. It's got some spice, man. I'm enjoying it. This is like <laughs> spice in Connecticut. For me, at least, I don't know. It is. Guys, it uh, is not. It is not your typical. It's it's not your typical Connecticut at all. 
for it's sure. not, and that's a good thing. That's yeah, a good yeah. Thing. Yep. definitely didn't want that. You know, I want yeah. wanted something that I was going to smoke. You know, I didn't want to start with the Habano on the day. I didn't want to start with the the broadleaf or the San Andreas or something like that. You know, it's like I want to have this progressive situation every day. Where it's like, all right, Connecticut. You know, all right, Habano, War Bear, Broadleaf. You know, then and then I usually go San Andreas. You go Neanderthal or something like that. So, is it, is your Broadleaf is your Broadleaf PA Broadleaf or is that Connecticut? No, it's Connecticut, and it's actually going to be a problem in the upcoming year. So we're already talking about production yeah. being being an issue. So we're I'm actually this month has been fucking crazy, man. March into April has been absolutely insane. And it's PCA, doesn't, yeah. you know, PCA event, re- cigar release events, you know, uh, media coverage, you know, podcasts, uh, birthday party nights. Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you for being here. No, yeah. you know, dude, I always, I always do everything I can to be accessible. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. You know, I, you guys, you guys are the ones that are doing all the hard work. I just get to show up I'm like, Hey, let's talk about stuff. You know, where like, you got to <laughs> all this. You got to be on point. You got to know how to keep the conversation going. If it dives. I mean, I'm sure you've done interviews where you're like, fuck, I got to get out of this. Okay. <laughs> and you're laughing. So I know that that's true, right? Like, uh, oh, it's true. Like, it's oh, true. God. <laughs> this guy is not going to give us anything. He's going to be like, yep. Mm. Yeah. Oh, shit. Know. It, answers. It, you know, I, yeah. I honestly, in the, in the recent experience of interviewing people at PCA, I feel like it's one of those to where, like, we really sometimes only have so much discourse before the actual interview. And that's really like where it becomes because the most awkward interview that I did in the last two years was honestly my second interview with West Tampa this year. And Rick and Sarah had already been on technically. Sarah had met me before Rick had met me and they're very good on camera. It was just the starting of the interview because I was all set up, ready to go with my stand and my phone and everything that you saw, right? You didn't have me there this year. I didn't have you there. That's true. Um, (laughs) But there were people talking to Rick, so I let them finish the conversation. And there was like this old man that came in and edged in. He's like, hey, can you take a photo of me with him? And I'm like, yeah, I got you, bro. So I, you know, I got my camera rolling. He steps into it. I take the photo with his camera. And then he goes to leave and Rick's like, okay, so how do we start? And I'm like, uh, we, we start right now. Hey, we're back. <laughs> you know, yeah. like was <laughs> how I started, but it was the funniest thing because everybody's cracking up and you kind of see that right as your interview ends and right. theirs begins, but it's like a, a split second thing, how it, how it got cut up. But yeah, right. like that, that's really the hardest part is just how do you want to start it? Like, what do you want to talk about? kind of deal like what are what are we here to talk about that once you get that ball rolling i feel as though everybody like you're saying has their new baby and they want to share that with the world and it becomes a lot easier at that point it's just the getting the plane off the ground i think Mm -hmm. that's fair realistically though there's probably i don't know i'd say eight or nine guys in this industry that you know that you can just stick the mic in front of and like they're good right and I got to be honest, I don't think that they're really, we, I don't need a new cigar. We can talk about whatever, you know, and we can talk about yep. factory stuff. We can talk about retail stuff. We can talk about the bullshit that I just went through this morning with my kids or whatever, I, you know, like I will just go and I'll, yeah. you know, and like, yeah. and I think that that's kind of happened. I, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do a podcast myself is because I wanted to polish myself. I wanted to have that ability to, to sit down and talk and feel comfortable about things instead of being like, um, and, um, uh, you know, and like, that's, that's just a thing that you got to beat out of yourself. Right. It's, I'm not beating yeah. somebody up cause they do that. I'm just saying that, you know, you start getting your reps in, you learn how to handle yourself. You learn how to talk. You can slow down how you speak. If you need to buy time, you can speed things up if you want to be excited or whatever. And, and I'm already a motiony kind of guy. I like to talk with my hands. I'm, you know, I'm constantly moving. Gesture. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't sit still, man. You know, when I when we go down, I'm going down to San Juan del Sur for two days first to hang out with Skip, and that's always awesome because I love I enjoy our conversations. But I hate sitting. I fucking hate sitting. I don't want to <laughs> sit still. I don't want to sit still. First of all, I like to go to the gym and beat the shit out of myself, and then you know, then I like to progress through my day and deal with all the turmoil that exists, whether it's on the family front or businesses front or whatever you know sure i don't like to be like oh what's on tv hmm. like i can't i can't you know <laughs> so not for too long anyways yeah now, we, 
Well, we generally try to keep this pretty open ended as far as like how the conversation just flows naturally as well for that reason. We never like, we never one, have a script. We yeah, we don't send people out questions or anything like nope. that. We just kind of let the chat interact with the guest, us interact with, the, you know, and it just it creates a more convivial just conversation. Sometimes general, they just talk to each other like they're doing tonight. This is just a whole bunch of side conversations. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I've been mm -hmm. seeing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. guys. Oh, you, Hold on, you, we got this one. You, we got this one. EKB is an Asian. He, uh, he, 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 yeah. Uh, I learned nothing. I know nothing about the fermentation process. I don't know anything yep. about it. Zero. <laughs> a salesman. I know yeah. zero about the fermentation process. And that's really what's really kind of funny to me is that I don't think that a lot of people in this industry that you see that are the face of the, the brand, they don't know anything about the fermentation process either. <laughs> That try to act like they do. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like no, mm -mm. like I, I distinctly remember looking at at a leaf in a in a pilo, and I'm like, oh, that's good. And, and then the guy who knew <laughs> what he was looking at, he goes, mierda. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is terrible. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, shit. Perfect. You know, so <laughs> yeah. like, I, you know, here's the trick to any. Um, write this down as far as being successful in any business. Okay, it's this thing called synergy. Okay, it's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals a thousand, right? It's a guy that's good about getting the tobacco and acquiring things. Mm -hmm. And it's a guy that has the vision to the blend, to the guy that has the ability to market it, to the guys that have the ability to sell it, to, to the retailer that has the ability to be excited about it, to the consumer who's going to enjoy it. Without all of that, one guy means absolutely fucking nothing. Plug them into any spot of those things. They're irrelevant. So yeah. Yeah. energy is absolutely everything, man. You know, you got to let the people who are good at doing something do that something and not right. try and control everything. Yep. And you got to recognize when they're real and you mm -hmm. got to work with them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, by the way, uh, the Cigar Hustlers podcast, it's not my podcast. It's Mike Palmer's podcast. He yelled at me. I said I said it was my podcast many times, apparently, at PCA. So it's Mike Palmer's podcast. But 100%, to be 100% honest, that guy does everything. I, I just sit down. Like he runs all yeah. the, you know, they, 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 he handles all the editing. He handles all the posts. He handles all the promotions. He does all of those things. So... <laughs> Is a double Corona the equivalent to a Churchill mic? It depends upon who you're asking, brother. It depends upon who you're asking, you know. Seven so subjective. Four, seven by 54. I, I, I don't know. You know, the some of these names, they're they're crazy, you know. Thanks, Zach. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, earlier, earlier in the conversation, you said you and Skip kind of like see differently in terms of like how you approach blending and things like that. I'm just curious, man, like what 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 that is. Um, I would love to be in those conversations. Example. Like here, yeah, the Corona like, Gorda that we're smoking right now. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just you a question. Probably fight over that. It yeah. was just a question of taste, right? So you know, I really feel like a lot of cigars that he take that he likes to blend have this kind of almost like a grit to it, like a this edge, right? Yeah. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just don't think that that's my cigar. Like that's not what right. I. That's not how I would have done it. You know, so. So, you know, we could sit down and we're smoking a cigar together. I'm like, that's, you know, definitely you. It's got you all over it. But the one difference I could tell you is progressively over time, knowing him for, you know, over a decade at this point, is the guy has gotten remarkably better at, at blending. You know, not saying that his blends were bad because his blends have always been fantastic. But he made that SBC 22. I'm like, I, you know, I downplay it in front of him. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. I'm like, damn, this thing's fucking good. You know, so he definitely can make, he can make really good cigars. I just feel like sometimes I would do things differently. So I'm like, oh, let's, you know, let's pull that out. Let's add this, you know, and what happens here? So, uh, and all of that's a testament to him because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know the stuff I know if I didn't have great friends like him, you know, and you yeah. know, Alex is the guy who's running the factory and, Man, uh, the factory is fantastic as far as communication. I can talk with this guy and say, "Hey, look, this is what we're thinking. This is what I'm thinking about doing. Like, what are your thoughts? Where are we at? You know." And he lets me know. He's like, "Oh, here's where here's what we're dealing with. Here's what's going on." Because there's always chaos in factories. There's always something going on. And I'm like, okay, so how do you figure out how to navigate through that, right? And what what's the kind of the game plan? And he's asking me questions about what my vision is and you know all these other thoughts where I kind of had those. I had challenges before with those barriers, you know. 
and now they don't exist. It's just another piece that's been replaced. It's even better. So I'm like, perfect, you know. So fi figuring all that stuff out is is really the fun part, and you know, having the arguments, having arguments with people that give a shit about you is is fantastic. Yeah, you know, because they're trying to help. Yeah, yeah they're trying to help you from their perspective. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So Passionate have, discussions. Yeah. Right. So hey, you acknowledge what they're saying. You don't say, nah, you know, what you're talking about. You, you, you know, you say, okay. Like the Connecticut dropped. And I said, okay, you know, do you remember the blend 10 years ago, Skip, nine years ago? And he sends me this picture of, of the blend. He goes, that's the blend. That's the Connecticut I want to make. He makes the cigars and he's like, I don't like them. They're not burning right. Terrible. I don't like how they taste. Whatever. Let's just wrap them up in segundos and we'll, we'll go back to square one. And I was like, shit. You know, the guy I really respect is telling me that this is not good. Like we're, you know, mm -hmm. things are not going as planned. Now, yeah. you know, a cynical person would just say, all right, well, no, you make cigar, right? Like we're doing this. I'm like, okay, before we pull the plug, send me some, please, all different sizes. And let me see what's going on. Right. He says, you, you're going to see it. They're all burning like shit. I said, okay. And I'm disappointed. I'm like, fuck, man, I really like that cigar. And so they come in, I light them up and he's like, did you get them? I said, yeah. Goes, Are you smoking? Have you been smoking them? I said, yeah. He goes, I told you. And I start sending him pictures. I'm like, dude, they're perfect. And they yeah. taste exactly <laughs> how I remember. He's like, they're burning perfect. I said, yeah. And he goes, okay. So when I sat down, I met with him later. He's like, I, dude, it's one of those things. He goes, you know, it reminded him like you ever hear a story about wine where it's really hazy and it looks like shit and it looks like shit. And then all of a sudden you just give it that extra week and boom, you're in business. It's like, here we yeah. are. And I, I never had any issues with the original blend. So I was surprised to see that they were struggling at first. So I knew it was going to, you know, but I still respected his opinion so much to a point where I'm like, oh, fuck, like. You're concerned, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, if sure. I gotta pull this, you know, he's not he's not trying to tell me to pull it just because you know we, his ego doesn't get in the way or anything like that. He, like he's legitimately concerned about something. So, uh, yeah. but it worked. It worked, man. And I'm super happy with this blend, dude. It has been so well received, and you know, uh, reorders continue to come in, which is fantastic. It's kind of it's relief and stress all at the same time because it's like, okay, when do we green light more production and when will I have enough money to do more? You're like, well, God, you know, so that's yeah, yeah. that's the challenge, yeah. And then I, you know, I have to figure out how to replace my broadleaf, so I'm working on that. That's why I'm going down, you know, in the in a few weeks, say, so, you know, so we have a we have a pretty good game plan as to what we're going to do. That's so, something. So knowing knowing like how hard Connecticut broadleaf is to harvest just because of the weather patterns, like is are there just not enough growers in Connecticut? Is it is it like in decline? Or is it because I feel is like Connecticut is that what they're pretty, saying? Weather is that what they're is that the excuse? That's what I've always heard. I've always heard I've always heard from blenders who are using Connecticut broadleaf that just depending on the growing season, they just don't get a lot of yield depending on the year. Um I mean that may, that may be true. I thought that a lot of it was consumed by the green department of the economy. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that you have that as well. So when you tell me I'm, I'm, I've, I've only heard that. I'm just curious. You know what, what man, is. I would love to tell you something, but the reality is, I don't know. I don't know what the answer <laughs> is there. I could tell you that, you know, if there isn't good tobacco, good broadleaf tobacco out there, then we're not making the cigars, you know? Wow. Yeah. And, and that's kind of where we're at. Like, how did we get there? I don't know, but we're here. So, you know, until that situation gets fixed, it kind of is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> burn, burn, burning. I mean, yeah, dude, man. Great you know, burn, man. Yeah. And what's really kind of funny to me too, is I'm not that guy that's, <clears throat> I've seen people rip apart a cigar and like, oh, this is not burning right or whatever. I'm like, just take a fucking lighter to it, man. Stop. Like, give me a break. It takes two seconds. Like, what are we? What are we doing here, man? What are we doing? You know. And I'm not talking about yeah. my brand. I'm just talking about cigars in general. You know. Oh, you know. This is. Oh, this is good. Uh, like, dude. 
the, the light is on the table. Just pick it up. And just... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. Move exactly. on. Does it taste good? How's it taste? You know, like I don't, I don't eat my steak and be like, you know, the cut was a little, mm, I don't know. I had to push a little harder on that. Like, give me, come on, dude. Stop it, <laughs> Stop it right now. Uh, no, even as uh, creators on the space, right? There's a lot of uh, brand questions that get asked sometimes. And, and some people do take it a bit overboard. We, we sometimes act as a customer service rep for some of the brands that <laughs> are reviewed. And you're just like, hey, I don't know what happened. Sorry, but, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> my factory did not make that. Because my factory doesn't screw <laughs> cigars. Right. Or yeah. exist. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy, man. But, you know, you guys, first of all, everybody has a right to, to I guess, how they feel about a cigar. I, you know, but for sure. me, I'm, I'm just, I don't know, man. There's so much real shit that I got to worry about. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. <clears throat> lighten up. You know, like, what are we doing, dude? What What the yeah. fuck are we doing? Yeah. Well, I, I don't, don't care. Know. I don't care about burn lines. I care about if a cigar is just popping, cracking, and then, you know, I'm taking off the band, it's ripping apart. And it's just like, that's when I'm like, come on, you know, but like, yeah, I'll wavy burn lines. So, but now, you know, okay. So that, that can be one, of, that can be so many different variables. Like that can happen because of the factory. Right. But that yeah. could also happen because of humidity issues from where it's been sitting to where you're smoking yep. it. Right. Yep. Totally. So, yep. And yep. more often than not, that'll happen on a lighter shade of more fragile wrapper, like your Connecticut's and stuff like that, right? So, you know, yeah. brace yourself, right? Like, well, right now we're at a good point where humidity is pretty nice, you know, but if it was super rainy where you're at and you step outside, it's kind of hot. And that was in 70 degrees, 70% on average, you know, boom, all of a sudden it's like, you know, so... I understand. I get it. I understand why you would be, uh, why that would frustrate you. You know, the sad part is that sometimes I would say more often than not, that's not because of the factory. That's be just because of the circumstances, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's one brand that shall not be named that I have a gripe with <laughs> because it's mainly with their 40, $50 LEs. So, well, you know, that look, it, <sighs> Dude, making a forty or fifty dollar LE, you better justify it. You better fucking justify it. You know, hey, and more, more times, good luck. More, more times than not, <laughs> more, more times than not, the cigar is shittier than like their core stuff. Yeah, yes. like the ones that are like yep. the LEs of like you know the forty fifty dollars. Give me, give me the original blend. It's not going to fall apart on me. It's not going to yep. taste like ass. Like for whatever reason, just these really expensive cigars just tend to suck ass. I don't know why. It's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. Well, like keep buying them, right? I, well, I want to try them, but you know, like I, you know, I guess the political, the the no, you don't like the clear. You want to try a fifty dollars cigar? If it's money, no I one wants. No one wants to smoke a fifty dollars cigar. That's bullshit. Well, that, you you I'm buy, you you right buy it because you. So sorry, but you buy it because you expect it. You you inherently expect it to taste like fifty dollars. You know you want it to be no. that good. There's a fifty dollars cigar. Really I, love, I love smoking a fifty dollars cigar. There's one in particular. Wait, which one do you like smoking, Mike? The Drone fiftieth Toro Maduro. Okay. I love that. It's a great cigar. And I'm it's gonna great tell cigar. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it probably costs them the same to make, right? <laughs> it probably does. What the fuck ever, because. <laughs> when I'm having a hard fucking day or if I want to, you know, and I'm stressing about something, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to set 50 bucks on fire and I'm going to smoke this bitch. And I feel <laughs> great about it. I'm like, because, because fuck it, you know? So, and I love the taste of it. The only thing for me, it's like, I'm constantly trying to chase when I'm smoking that cigar. I'm trying to, I'm trying to chase the millennium. I don't know if you guys have ever smoked a millennium. Damn. That's a great cigar. I was like, holy smokes, I love that cigar. So a close second to that cigar is the 50 Torn Maduro. I don't knock a cigar for how it burns, as long as it's good. Mm. But when it does, I have a super crisp burn line. And so, oof, I love that shit. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I totally agree. You know, when you're like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, need to, I need to preface that comment, though, because Roger smokes mostly $50 and above. So just okay. so that you know, Mike. <laughs> but we also just come to the conclusion that some $50 <laughs> cigars are complete shit, right? Yeah. Some of them are like, yeah. ah, what, you know, what are we doing? We don't belong in this. We don't belong here. 
you know. Roger doesn't turn on the camera unless he's burning fifty dollars. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Hey, to eat your own. I'll oh, make him yeah. a fifty dollars cigar. Don't worry, it'll taste fantastic. You know, so like when you say that, <laughs> when you say that about a brand, I think about so many different things, right? I think about okay, was was the access to the tobacco what really raised the price? But what the tobacco, even if it was extremely limited, it would only raise you know the the price of the cigar maybe a few pennies on the wholesale end, right? Mm -hmm. So like then you start start thinking about packaging, right? And it, a few pennies definitely makes a difference in your price. Believe me, the, when you're starting here and you have to manufacturing costs, shipping costs, TTB, all these other things, all of a sudden you're paying three or $4 more on a wholesale level. So that means you're paying six to $8 more on a retail level. Right. Right. So yeah. I get that. Okay. So maybe that would raise the price a little bit. The other thing is maybe they've been taking in the dick for the past five years, right? They haven't been making enough margin and they're like, you know what, man, we really need to get over this hump. Let's mm -hmm. make this small run let's charge more money for it and hopefully that'll help, you know? So like that could be a thing too, you know, or maybe yeah. they just want to have that. Maybe they're gunning for that, that particular market base. Maybe they're gunning for, for that guy that only smokes the fifties. Right. So mm -hmm. more, more often, I say all that just to say more often than not, it's not because of the tobacco costs, but yeah. you know, it, when it's an, it's an art or whatever the case may be, or however you want to say it, like, I'm gonna tell you right now. One day I'm gonna make a fucking expensive ass cigar. I'm going to. It's gonna happen, and it's gonna be super badass. Now, does a Ferrari move the same way as you know other sports cars that are half of the price? Maybe I don't know, but they ain't a fucking Ferrari. So you know. Mm -hmm. So good point. If you're gonna make it, it better be a fucking Ferrari is, is my point. It's just like, you know, I want this. It better be absolutely badass for every single reason why, you know? So yeah, I want that shit. I totally want that, but I, you know, without question, but it's not just going to be, Hey, I made this and you know, well, it's, it's a super limited. So expensive no there'll be there'll be some thought there dude i promise you there'll be some thought you'll be like okay i get it now you know yeah, yeah. Well, it's because like with uh with everything we've been seeing with like the year of the dragon shit that's been coming out like the the davidoff year of the dragon i didn't like that cigar what was it the placenta year of the dragon the gurkha year of the dragon all the all the like super high-end zodiac stuff just is not up to snuff like give me like give me a late hour you like keep that year of the dragon shit you know just yeah. like, give me more stuff give me your stuff that i know i can depend on like it's just it's getting to a point to where it's just it's boring at this we point like it's boring of like having to anticipate being let down you know what dude you're 100 percent correct and here's the reality the harsh hard reality is that cigar is not marketed towards you it's not marketed towards me. It's not marketed towards anybody no. on this channel because we are fucking cigar guys, right? Mm -hmm. It's marketed yeah. to the guy that walks into the cigar shop five times a year and says, what's one of the most expensive cigars you have? Oh, sir. Yeah. We have this year of the dragon, right? And this is a very special blah, 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 blah. And they take it hook, line, and sinker, right? Now. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here and tell that. First of all, if I walk into a store and I'm and I'm running a let's say I'm running a cigar event, right? I'm hitting it. I'm we're hitting everybody. I will take no prisoners. We are talking about cigars and you know, at the end of the day, I probably have a 90% close rate of you are walking out the door with one of my sticks, right? So that's one out of 10 that's not walking out, right? Yeah. So, here are some examples of the one out of 10 that are walk are walking out with the, without the stick. One guy's a complete asshole, right? I mean, just rude and obnoxious. And you know what? I'm not wasting my time, dude. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get gassed up. He knows it all or whatever the case may be. I'm not touching it. Number two is your guy who's coming in and says, I smoke my infused or whatever. I'm never going to get him off of it. Right. I'll still take my yeah. shot, but the chances are it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. Here's the third one. And this guy I let go. The guy who's coming oh. in saying, I'm grabbing the Padron. 
uh, you know, I'm a Pajon guy. I'm grabbing, I want to buy a Pajon or I'm, I'm going to buy, I'm here to buy the, you know, these expensive Davidoffs. I'm not going to take that guy off that cigar. And here's why I have a partnership with the retailer. I'm there for them and they are there for me. I'm not about to take 40 or $50 out of their pocket so that I can advance just my business. I think that that's totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? Hey man, Pajon's a great cigar. You know, you want to try something new, maybe give you something else to take home with you, but I am not saying, well, don't smoke that, you know, come smoke this. I'm not going to do that to somebody that's working their ass off as a retailer, man. It is not easy. It is not easy. And not, and not off. And I got to be honest, finding good retailers is hard. And when I find them, I don't want to fuck it up. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I want them to know absolutely. that, back, you know, I yeah. want to know that when I I want them to know that my reputation will always precede me. I walk in the door and I am there to help them because they are there to help me. Period. So I'm not gonna fuck that up. Somebody's buying the forty dollar per joint. I'm like, okay, enjoy it because I got these thirteen dollar ones. They're great, but nope, you get that. You know, like now I'm leaving them alone. I'm not messing with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, you said you uh, you blended the Connecticut originally in Corona Gorda. Do you tend to do you tend to blend the uh, cigars in general, like first in Corona Gorda, and then branch off from there? Like, where where's your baseline? There isn't one. It's just more a question of what's my vision and what I'm thinking, and and how things respond. You know, the Habano I blended it was in a Toro. That was my first. That was my initial thought. Is okay. Let's do Toro and work around that. You know. When I did SBCs, I wanted I love Corona Gorda. So I'm like, let's do Corona Gorda. When I did this oh. cigar, same scenario. It was just a special occasion cigar. It was a one-time run. It was like 100 sticks or whatever. I wanted to make that in a Corona Gorda, right? So I don't think that there's any particular design. It's just what thought process is going on. And then, you know, you you, you kind of dabble. Okay, how, how does that taste? Okay, well, what if it what if it was a different size? You know? What's really cool is if you're there and you're in the thick of things, you can say, you know, I wonder what this would taste like in a five by 50 Robusto. And you say, okay, hold on. And then you get <laughs> people walk away. Yeah. Boom, 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 they come back two minutes later, cigar, right? Now you got to understand that, that certain particular leaves have nuances that are uh, sharp and they mellow out tremendously after, you know, uh, six to 12 weeks of sitting. So, you learn those nuances, you know, and hopefully you're, you're smoking with other people that have been, you know, well versed in the industry. They say, okay, that's going to disappear. You know, no, that note's going to, that, you know, that note won't be as apparent, you know, but I've been able, I have the ability to identify a lot of that stuff at this point. So cool, man. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so like, uh, do you ever because you you know you said you don't know about like fermentation you know you you're not like an expert in that you leave that to the experts right do you do you like ever do you do you aspire to like one day be like a master blender like to have like more of a pulse on how how that kind of stuff works from the manufacturing side from the tobacco layer side uh, well i think you said two things there for one i believe that the term master blender is complete horseshit Right. I don't, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. think that, that is a fucking accurate. If anybody calls themselves that, uh, I mean, the same scenario. I'm like, okay, dude, you're amazing. You know, like, <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Okay, grandpa, let's get you to bed. Stroke right? him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have found myself, honestly, as of late, asking these apparent questions in my mind. Like, could I learn these things? You know, could I figure out how to grow and generate tobacco and could I figure out how to cure it and what I want to. And I think the answer is yes, dude, here's my issue. I have this really retarded, extremely possessive type a personality where when I do something, it can absolutely consumes it absolutely consumes me i love the shades i love the shades you leave the shades on the, yeah that middle finger was not for you mike that middle finger was not for you i get it i get it that's fine Sorry, I, I felt my ears burning so i had to perk up i gotta be honest you can flick me off too i'd be like all right yeah fuck me whatever like it doesn't bother me uh, you know look yeah i don't want to you know I, I i try my hardest not to be the guy that gets triggered because you know 
it's not worth it. And when it happens, it's not worth I'm the energy. Uh, yeah, and I'm relentless to a point where it's like, you know, it's like, all right, enough. He's dead. Like, okay, but who else can we kill? I, and, you know, I don't want to open that. So, <laughs> I have done a great job of learning. In a video how, game. In a video I, game. Yeah, I have a, done a great, I've done a great job of learning how to control that guy and letting a lot of shit go. So, you know, it, people can tell me to go fuck myself all the time. Like, all right, cool. It, it's, it's funny how bothered it makes people that I wear sunglasses. I love it. I'm like, how that affects you at all? I have no idea. But yeah, good luck, bro. You. <laughs> you seem like a guy in your younger years, Mike, where you would just resolve differences through conversation, through discourse. Uh, I don't think that was honestly the case. I think that you know, um, <laughs> you got that vibe, or was I, that sarcasm? I think I think that I mean, more, more conflict was definitely uh, was that, more. Apparent. That seemed facetious. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, look, man, uh, you know, there, look, there are things that resonate with people as an individual. I distinctly remember seeing this Tyson thing because I know you brought up Tyson before, and he's talking about, you know, there's this beast inside of me, and I don't want to wake him up and whatever. And you see tears come out of his eyes, man. I was like, bro, I fucking feel that, man. Like, you know, I just felt like he was talking to me, you know, when he made that mm -hmm. comment. I'm like, yeah, I get it, you know. So when you learn to kind of box that stuff away. You don't want to bring it back out. You know, you don't. And what, what's even funnier now is like, I honestly f see myself as a really nice, approachable guy. I love talking to people and all this other stuff. I'm always like, hey, what's going on or whatever. But I still get this fucking uh, label like, you know, he's extremely aggressive. I'm like, what did I do? Like, I smile. <laughs> yeah. like, well, you know, whoa, calm down. I'm like, who who needs who's who needs to calm down? Like, is there someone right. behind me? Like, I'm calmer than you are. Like, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, sir. Yeah. Do y'all yeah. remember uh, the movie Anger Management with Adam Sandler on the plane? Or yeah. and he's like, yeah. I'm, I'm calm. I don't. I'm calm. Right. And they're like, Sir, stop raising your voice. He's like, I'm <laughs> calm. And then they finally tase him. But it's like <laughs> five minutes of him being like, I'm just asking for you know. Yeah, <laughs> Everything right. is fine. Everything is fine. I don't get it. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's funny. So, dude, I'm curious just just because I'm winding down on the, on this uh, justice. How would you describe it to someone? Like, what what do you get? Uh, you know, so when I when I blend or when I taste cigars, I, you know, I don't necessarily get um, chocolatey notes or anything like that. For me, you know, condega tastes like condega. Put on a huevo tastes like put on a huevo. You know, Indonesia doesn't taste like anything. Some people taste Indonesia. I don't know. You know, Habano tastes like Habano. You know. um, so I, when I blended the cigar, I wanted to have uh, like an undertone of sweetness, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more bitterness and, you know, uh, like just enough of that edge of spice where I could enjoy a lighter cigar. And that was my, my premise and my thought process. So, when I smoke it, you know, I light it up and, you know, first couple of huffs, you kind of get like this, mm, oof, like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Right. Like, uh, all right, that's where, that's yeah. where I need to be. So, you know, that, that was my thought process when I blended it. That was what I wanted to create. And man, it really worked out well for me. I, 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 for me, I nailed it on the head. It's, it's, I fucking love it, man. I love the cigar. I can't get enough of it. And, and it, and it shows that other people love it too. You know, dude, I got for me. I got uh, top twenty-five cigars. I got two cigars on top twenty-five half wheel, right? Okay. And nice, man. Yeah, that was a big. That was big for me, dude. It was um, the Zim Zimbabwean. Oh, I've heard great things. So <laughs> exactly. Don't worry about the, don't, don't worry about the Peter Pally, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Let that go. Let it go. So I know the, um, the, the the developing palace guys, they really love this cigar too. Did they, they? Don't love anything? I'm, no, I'm pretty they sure love they, it. They're really down. I'm pretty sure they're down. Holy shit, Aaron! Really? Yeah, right? I, you know, I, Aaron's. I, I always, I always put Aaron in his own category. <laughs> you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah, but, I don't even think he likes cigars. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's authentic. John well, McTavish. The only reason. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. John, John McTavish is awesome. Love, love that guy. The only reason why I know how to pronounce Postagne correctly is because of Aaron Lewis. So I have to give him props there. All right. He says it every time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So they so, so okay. So like what was cool is, you know, 
it got so much notoriety, not just from media guys, but you know, I got so many reposts from it and, you know, and like so much love that it, that was hard for me to process, dude. Like I hit this whole thing in my life where I'm like, I don't know, man, it was just too much. Like, like I have never, I, I've never had that much positivity come my way where, you know, like I mentally legit struggled to process this whole thing. And, you know, like, <laughs> Like, you know, you, one person says, Hey man, you're a good dad. You're like, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's like, no better example. Goodwill hunting, you know, Robin Williams talking to Matt. Oh, Damon. Yeah. Hey, it's not your fault. He's like, yeah, I know, man. No, it's not your fault. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. And like, as we get along, he's like, stop fucking with me. And also like the breakdown yeah. happens. Like that's where yeah. I was, you know, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, so like, I didn't know how half we was going to rate it, but they buy all their cigars, you know, and sometimes they buy from my site. So they bought the Perfecto Connecticut's and they bought War Bears in five and five. And I'm like, holy shit. And I knew that this was coming close to the end of the year. I'm like, they're going to rate these things, man. They're going to put them on their list. And I'm like, and then I start getting in my head. I'm like, what if I get the number one cigar of the year? Like this could be it. I could have the number. So, so it was great that I didn't get number one uh, because for me now, like, it gives me more to strive for and keep working because bar, my, now. yeah, I'm like, okay, you know, and like, how about that cigar? I didn't rate it. And I'm like, I bought ad space for them so I can harass them with it. And, uh, you know, and you know, Matt's really cool and Raul's they're, they're good guys. They, they kind of, they just went with it and they tell me, well, we didn't afterwards after I, I vented to them and I, you know, beat the shit out of them for ads and, and stuff. They said to me, well, we just didn't smoke it to review, so how could we have? And I'm like, ah, hmm. well, this, well, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool that you're telling pals. Loved it, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna ask them, man. But are... my... Sorry about that, Matt. I didn't mean to step on you, man. Dude, go, go, man, go. Let's go. go we can't... But I was gonna ask, what, which one uh, of your cigars? was the first one that you felt like took off for you. Like you felt like there was the first one that was like, okay, we're getting some notoriety here at Pastania. Now we, we started like people were recognizing the cigar and we starting to move. You know, uh, I've always feel like they've always had kind of been acknowledged, right? The Habano definitely got acknowledged. The Broadleaf got acknowledged and they both, they've both done well. I don't think any of the, either one of them, you know, I, I think the big one that really kind of popped was when I first made the war bear. You know, it was like, oh, that's what, what I was thinking you were gonna say, but I, I didn't know, like from your yeah. perspective. Uh, but like, as far as, but that's one cigar, you know. As far as a, a whole core line being extremely well received, so much to a point where people are going back, like, oh yeah, Habano too, Broadleaf too. What's up? You know, like that was definitely the Connecticut man. You know that that was that was really kind of stratosphere. Like we're like we are now you know, we are gearing towards takeoff, you know? So, and the other ones, like I said, they've done well. They're, I'm not complaining at all. I'm very, very grateful. I mean, half, uh, the hard work was a lot of hard work was done. I'm working with a great factory, man. They got great tobacco. I can't fuck up that bad. Right. Mm -hmm. like I, <laughs> yeah. The floor is only so low. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I can, I can make a good cigar, right? Like I, I don't think I could, I think that if I walked into the factory and said, okay, how do I make complete shit? How, like, what can I, what can I take from here and make it absolutely atrocious? I think that I would struggle more on that than it would be to make just a good cigar. Honestly. Cause they have the tobacco, you know, yeah, where, yeah, no doubt. But, but, but sometimes like everything comes together, the way the cigar looks, the way it smokes, which band yeah. is like, and all, you know, all of that kind of goes into the cigars, like you know, now you got people on Instagram posting your cigar. You got people talking about it. Oh, this is my favorite. Yeah. You know that whole thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think that you're right. I would say that the War Bear was the first one. I was like, boom. You know, because you know your Habano is your Habano, and your Broadleaf is your Broadleaf, and those things for me they taste differently. But maybe they didn't taste differently enough, or maybe they didn't stand out enough, right? But then when I went back in and I said, okay, San Andreas tends to be very dominant. How do I offset that? Let's do Ecuador and Habano and San Andreas as a barber pole to add some complexity and some sweetness to it and not have that San Andreas be overbearing, right? Okay, and now how do we, what else can we do? What are, what are the fillers? What combination will it look like? All right, let's whip this together and boom. You know, yeah, the war bear was like, oh, you know, 
all of a sudden, you know, this Polish guy is making some fucking creative <laughs> bangers, you know? Right, right, right. right. So yeah, I would say I'd say you're right as far as the the war bear was definitely the one, the first one of like a big hey. So, because you you have you have like you know from the perspective of us as a consumer, but you never know what it's like for the person to actually work on the cigar, to bend the cigar, and you're looking at the numbers, you're looking at the stats, you're looking at the feedback and all that kind of stuff. So you see it differently than what we're gonna see. It. So I didn't know if there was something for you. It's like, okay, this is the one. Okay, I know you got something. I know the ball is rolling. You kind of walk up with your head up like, yeah, I, I did it with this. You know, so I didn't know if yeah. that war bear was the one for you or if it was something else, like the Connecticut. Yeah, I would say the war bear is definitely fair, uh, you know, a fair statement. You know, the, the the crazy part is that I don't, I've never really made a lot of cigars, right? So when I would make war bear production, it would be 250 or 500 boxes, something like that. So I would sell all of them relatively fast, you know. And even yeah. my other production, my core line stuff, I, I, I didn't have a ton of, I still don't realistically, mm. but I have more than I did then. Right. I didn't have a ton of money to produce a, a, an absolute ton of cigars. So, you know, like they would sell. Right. And, you know, retailers would take them and they would move them. So that was always going on. I think that, you know, I think that the, the hardest part is, to really get the feedback and the intel from people and to really kind of see how things are, are going, you know, I think that things always, things are always going okay. You know, there you go. A little, little blast oh, from the past you, here. Absolutely. Nice. That's, that's 20 about like, right there. Feel like you're doing, my bad, Michael. Um, you're well, good. I was saying like, what, what about when it comes to like your colleagues and the other, you know, uh, blenders and the other, you know, brand owners and things like that? Are they giving you feedback like, yo, you knocked it out of the park with this one? Or, you know, they give you more harsh feedback like, yo, you could have done better with this line or whatever the case may be. Have you gotten that kind of, you know, you know um, shoulders? I would say that, you know, the feedback that you get, you never know how legitimate it is. Right. Uh, the one, so, you, you know, I, and I respect people differently in different avenues of this industry, as far as blending, as far as marketing, as far as design, all of those things. Right. So right, I right. can tell you that, um, you know, I heard a story about Saka smoking my first war bear and is in a perfecto. And he told the guy, man, this is a really good cigar. And he said, you know where he fucked up? And, and I don't remember who told me the story and he said, where he goes, you should have put a bear on the fucking cigar. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guess, so guess what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> bear. <laughs> bear on the cigar. You know? yeah. like, Probably you know, legit information too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like I was, so, you know, when that got back to me, I, I, I respect his, his opinion on stuff like that. You know, there's, I would say there's only a handful of dudes that I really respect as far as Intel uh, when it comes to marketing design and stuff like that. You know, it's we, what's really fucking cool is that about right, right when COVID hit or right after COVID, let's say like 2020 ish, like mid year, you know, I didn't realize the access I had to some of these dudes, you know, mm -hmm. where like we're cool. Right, like I can call Saka, I can call Booth, I can call Nick. He won't answer, but I can call him at least. <laughs> right, uh, Nick Malolo at that voicemail. Right, I can. ID. Pop yeah. Up on the ID. yeah, I mean, I've had a friendship with Skip and Michael Rosales for over a decade, you know, and it never hit me that it's like Eric Espinoza, you know, these are all my guys, you know. Now Jack Tarano too, better drop him because he'll get angry when I mention his name. Uh, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> Like I can, and now I can call all those guys at any time. And I, I can say, Hey, you know what? Let's make a cigar together. And they're like, fuck yeah, let's do it. You know? Whereas before, if I asked that question, it'd be like, no, we're not. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know? And now like the, the, the newer, the newer friendship that's really, that really started uh, at PCA was Herklotz. Michael Herklotz, you know, we had a, a quick conversation and now, you know, we've exchanged numbers and, I'm like, fuck, dude. He brought you into his closet? Yeah. It was, it was a little creepy at first, but I'm cool now. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know, uh, though that's what's awesome, man. You know, like Matt Booth, fuck, bro. You know, uh, like these guys are all cool dudes. They're all just down to earth guys, and getting information and perspective from all of them, like, like that's that's how that's how Kobe comes becomes Kobe, right? That's how Jordan became Jordan. Is like you learn from the greats, you piece it together and you make your own, dude. So. Mm-hmm. I now have uh, like I'm fortunate where I have all that, you know. I have all of this. I'm like, this is incredible, you know. And I'm so grateful for that. And you know, those guys, believe me, I've had my arguments with all with some of them, you know. But I, I know that we like we still get along, right? You know, and we can disagree on things and and keep it moving. It's not like, well, fuck him, you know. Like we're not getting along. We're not friends, and he's an ass or whatever. I'll tell them if I thought the cigar, the cigar they made was a miss. I'll tell them if I thought that, you know, something that they were marketing was a miss. The funniest, the funniest guy to talk to about is if I think a cigar is a miss is Matt Booth. I'm like, dude, that cigar was terrible. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know, like, what? What? He's like, yeah, man. When it, when it hit that size, it sucked. I'm like, he's oh, also great. another, he's also another Padron Anniversario fan. Big time. Is he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had no idea. Yep. hundred percent. That's one of his that, birthday uh, smokes. That new, uh, the Don Derma that came out last year. That was a miss in my that opinion. Was. <laughs> you should have told him when we were at yeah. PCA, bro. When I haven't. He comes on the show, I, we'll have to tell him. You know, you know what's funny is I love Ronnie's from Secreto. He's, I'll, I will talk to him. I mean, we, there was about a two month uh, variant where I didn't talk to him much because he's rebuilding his bar. But I love having conversations with that guy, and you know, he's pretty smart at a lot of things that he does. You know, what's even what's even more remarkable and what's what's kind of fascinating about this injury is in industry is that cigar doesn't have to be great, and everybody will buy it, mm-hmm. and everybody and a lot of people will love it. You know, just just because of how it's marketed and how it's sold and how it's packaged. You know, uh, you see it all the time. You see it all yeah. the time. So I've never had that cigar, so I can't I can't tell you if I thought it was complete shit or not, but um or if it was a miss. But I've happily told if if I didn't like it, I would tell him I'd say, Hey man, uh you know, I don't know what happened here. Uh as far as cigars that I thought were incredible a PCA, that L F D thirtieth, dude. I don't know if you guys had that cigar. No, me not too. Yet. I need to no, kind of grab some, yeah. You need to buy it when it hits. Okay. You need to okay. fucking buy it. That I smoked that cigar and I was like, holy shit. That is really good. So much to a point where I, I want to go back and be like, yeah, I need to buy more, but this is expensive, man. Mm-hmm. 30 you know? bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, well, well, it did it remind you of any, anything else in their portfolio? No. Or for LFD? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Shit. I mean, it's in that chapter one, chapter two format size, but Tola tastes nothing like them. Okay. I, like, I also heard the the new chef special is really good with the, the Connecticut Broadleaf. Is really good. Yeah. That one is really good. That one was also a banger. Nice. Yeah. So I'm always up for some new LFD stuff. So obviously, Postani Connecticut. Yeah. That one, the Corona <laughs> Gordon. Obviously. 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 So, <laughs> So like the I'd say the four that I would that that really kind of gave me attention. Obviously, my own child, right? I love Postania. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Chromag PA. I thought that was absolutely amazing. LFT thirtieth, and absolutely on that new chef special. So those are the four that that uh, you know. I didn't smoke a ton of new stuff at PCA, but you know, more often than not, a lot of times it's well, like you're. you're- you're fucking busy too. You're there as a retailer and a manufacturer. You know, yeah. you're you're, yeah. you're busy, yeah. man. I'm very a tired. I'm doing a lot of shit. I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Still tired. I'm just doing the best with what I got, man. You know, like I, you know, I have a saying that it's outwork everybody, dude. You know, and I want I want to have that reputation and that mentality. It's like, man, this motherfucker won't just won't go away. Like, yeah, you're right. I'm not. I am not going anywhere, dude. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna show up, and you know. I did an interview one time with Bear. I had the stomach bug, bro. Mm. That was tough. Uh, you I'm, wanna, sure, you, I'm sure. Dude, you know, I'm talking clenched cheeks the whole nine yards. Like, <laughs> oh, <I'm gonna> 
<laughs> but I didn't want to cancel. The only there was one. There's only been one uh, podcast that I canceled on, and I felt, and I still feel bad about it. And it's uh, Renard's podcast. And I was so sick, I could not get out of bed. I'm like, dude, I just, I thought I could rally, man. I am so sorry. I can't move. I, yeah, yeah. There was another one where I, where I had 102 fever. Like, I, I'm, I promise, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up, man. I'm gonna, I want the, I want that reputation of that motherfucker, is relentless. You know, accessible. Yeah, always. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and just. Even with our own podcast, you know, I want to make sure that every week there's a podcast every week. You know, I yeah. think that what's been going for five years, I think that we may have missed one, maybe two weeks. That's it. Huh? Where, where there was zero content, you know, we couldn't do it. Just everything was so messed up that we couldn't make it happen. No, I did not try the new crown heads corn at a Maduro Habano. I saw it. I yeah. saw it from a distance. Yeah. The, the, the only new thing from the show that I've tried so far was the S84, the new Blackened, which was not a terrible cigar. Which, That's you know, I, I, raining not what, what? Oh, what two raining endorsements. That's two raining endorsements. Not terrible. Not terrible. Not bad. <laughs> well, we have a particular, we, we both have a particular uh, animosity towards the M81 original. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was shit. Terrible. It was shit. It was terrible. But well, that guy say that shit. I'm glad you said that openly because it, that shit was way too many ringing and bullshit. Bullshit was ashy. Yeah. Absolutely ashy. Dude, I'm going to always be 100% honest. You know, and, and and here's here's what I believe about being honest and totally authentic is authentic uh, autistic, I don't uh -huh. know. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I believe about being autistic. Um, I'm not trying to shit on somebody, right? You know what I mean? I'm not like, no. I just want to see him do better. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. And and you're not gonna. They're not gonna do better if you say, "Hey, I really liked it." Yeah. You know. Yep. So. You're gonna always get my honest opinion, you know. I'm just, I, I just believe in that. If somebody looks at me and says, you know, you think I've been gaining oh, some weight, I'm like, yeah, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you're up about a solid thirty. We got to get this under control, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mm -hmm. want the truth, don't fucking ask me, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> but with that being said, I'm also gonna be the guy that say, oh, all right, man. There's several different approaches that we can do that'll help you. Let's. Do you want some help? Because you know, how do we break this down? We got to do. It's caloric deficit, right? Like, all right. Well, so what's the easiest approach for caloric deficit for you? Is it high protein? You know, is it intermittent fasting? You know, like what do we what do we got to do? Where are you eating the most? Let's let's break it down. I'm not I'm not just gonna say what's up, fatty, and walk the fuck away. You know. <laughs> like, <laughs> You want to be pragmatic. You want to help. You yeah. Want to help. If the it, but I will only help if somebody wants my help, right? Exactly. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. You know, for one, you got to ask me the question, "What do I think about this?" And for two, you you know, if I say, "Hey, you would you like some assistance?" You got to say yes. You know, because I feel like yeah. more often than not, I have caught myself where I want to help a guy and I'm saying, hey, look, man, you really got to try this, try this. And I see that it's not being received. And I'm like, oh, man, I should have just shut the fuck up 20 minutes ago. You know? You know? Yeah. Two and a half years missed zero days. Yeah, exactly, man. And being, I think that, you know, like, look, there's too much there. Tony, you're 100% you're right, man. There's too much bullshit out there. You know? Sure. And... Yeah, so, so you know, when I smoke my cigar and I give it to people, there there are individuals that I want to hear from, you know, and and see what they say because I definitely respect their opinion, you know. Ronnie's definitely one of them from Secreto. He'll tell you, he ain't gonna fucking tell you. Uh, Brett Fry from that Tobaccoology, he's another one. He'll tell you, he's like, man, I don't know, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> there are guys well, that like like good. You, you go, you go, Keelan. You go, man. It's you. Oh, he's on that side. You're on. You're over here for me. You're on this. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, it, it, it seems like you, you uh, take your time with 
with your with your blends and, and the cigars that's coming out. Are you working on anything now? Do you got something like you know, or you just kind of sitting on the justice for right now to let that work and do its thing? No, man, you got to keep going. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm focusing on San Andreas Claro as as far as the next blend, mm-hmm. okay. broadly. Ah. So, uh, next bold cigar. You know, I think that you can do some stuff with that tobacco. So I'm, uh, you know, and that that's something that should be accessible, and that was something that was brought to my attention. So I'm like, okay, let's see what that looks like, you know. But I want it to be mine. I want it to, I want it to have my signature on it as far as what I think it needs to taste like. So that's what, really- what stage are you in right now? Are you still just kind of, you know, tasting, you know, blends and just kind of seeing where it's at, or do you kind of like, okay, I kind of know where this is going right now? Well, that's the funny part, man. Is that uh, that shit don't take long? Take long when you work with somebody. It's awesome. Fuck yeah, yeah. I said, hey, like I uh, first first conversation. I said, okay, hey, let's do this for the wrapper. Obviously, the San Andreas Claire. Let's do this for the binder. Let's do these these different combinations for the filler. And tell me tell me what you think. And it's like, nah, eh, you're not gonna like it. And I respect I respect Alex and the other guys, you know, in the factory. I'm like, okay. He's like, so what else are you thinking? So, you know, then I said, all right, let's do this, 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 right? And he's like, okay. So he's off doing, prepping that. So, you know, what'll, what's really cool is that I, I'm actually fortunate to try it after it's being rolled. If it was rolled this week or next week, you know, it'll it'll have two weeks of rest. I'm really kind of used to just putting it together day of and saying, okay, I know, I know mm-hmm. where we're going to go. I know what's going to be different, you know, and I'm with other guys that'll tell me what's going to be different. And boom, we got a cigar, man. We're we're in it. We're going. Yeah, that's dope. So, you know, uh, I think that that's one of the biggest parts of working with the factory I work with. You know, the, the good tobacco is there. So, yeah. Uh, you it, know. Like, did, did you did you want to work at Nika Sueño because <laughs> of your personal relationship with Skip before, or did you just love what they were doing? Like, oh, so here's more of like the product or, or more like the, the relationship. So here's what happened, man. I, I got shit on by other retailers and all of a sudden, you know, legal allocations weren't so good. Right. Uh, yeah. Things, things were happening. Right. And I'm like, Oh shit, man. And my buddy, Dan Stanley, I will always give this guy props. He actually, son of a bitch drove two and a half hours. I haven't seen him in like four or five years. He drove two and a half hours up to come to the Bull Weevil event just to come say hi to me. And nice. He he he, he mailed me uh Aquitaine Adelatles when they were unbanded. They had just gotten started. And I looked at these cigars and I'm like, okay, no bands. Ziploc, thanks, bro. Put them in my humidor and <laughs> left them alone. And like a few months had passed, and he goes, Hey, did you smoke those cigars? And I'm like, No, I totally forgot about them. I'm gonna go smoke it right now. And I lit it up. And I'm like, holy shit, this thing is fucking good. And I'm like, who who made this cigar? He goes, oh, it's Roma Craft. So then I reach out to Michael Rosales, and you get the, okay, well, what are you looking to do? I'm like, I want to carry. So now I want to pick, I need to pick my new horse, right? Like, who am I yeah. going to back? I'm like, right. well, this, yeah. guy, this guy is just brought to me, right? And it's fucking amazing. I'm like, okay, you're my guy. This is no problem. How, what, hey, I want to carry your product. You know, and at this point, I had a really easy platform. I could start to really kind of build and develop a brand. And, you know, and, you know, they're, they're my guys. Like, I'm in. You guys are making good cigars. I'm in, right? So yeah. it's like, okay, well, in order to buy it, you know, we're looking for whatever, you know, we want you to carry all these things. Like, you, like when you deal with retailers, you don't know what you're dealing with, right? And like everybody has different approaches. So uh, the requirement is X, right? In some circumstances, you know, my approach is different. Personally, I I have a, you know, I have an affinity for the small retailer guy that's, you know, got room for two. Like, hey, I love your cigars. I can't afford shit. Can I get, you know, can I get two boxes? I'm like, Yeah. yeah, man. You know, if you're cool. I'll, I'll make that accept uh, that exception, you know, but if you're a dick, you, you could, it could be a way bigger order. And I'm like, this is not a fit. I'm yeah. not doing yeah. I I've had emails where it's like, well, do you know who we are? And like, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice by, by, by not permitting us uh, access to uh, uh, LE volume in comparison to, and I'm like, I'm good, bro. I'm yeah. good. Bro. 
I've eaten spaghetti my whole life, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it, bro. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Be okay. I don't have to fucking bend down to you. So, yeah. um, shit, what the hell was the question? Um, <laughs> it was well, about how you guys started radio. with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I started beating the drum for these guys, man. You know, like, hey, here's your buy in or whatever. I'm like, okay. Like, I know it's all going to be good. Whatever, like bring it on, man. I want to make sure that I properly represent everything. I'm like, I'm, I'm in. So, <clears throat> I just started developing with them, <clears throat> and they were just in their infancy. We're talking about cigars that had no bands, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I need to go meet these guys. So I went, I went down to S. Lee with my brother, or I need to meet Skip. And I don't know if Skip knew I was going to be there or not. I got to be honest, because you know. I reached out to Michael. I'm like, where's Skip? Uh, I'm here. You know, all of a sudden, you know, a few hours later, a guy comes whipping around the corner like, hey, you know. So I had already been doing well with the brand. And, you know, uh, I had met him before in uh, Vegas. He was a lot happier back then. He was very <laughs> good. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, this is a, our second or third meeting him or whatever. And I'm like, I want to make a cigar. And they had just got into the factory. You know, this is when they just moved out of Esteban's backyard and, you know, garage and they had space to grow. He was like, OK, well, let's start blending. I'm like, OK. So, you know, like I already knew that they had good tobacco. Right. And then a relationship, a friendship just kind of cultivated from there. You know, like they already knew I got their back. Right. So, uh, you know, it was it was just fit. It was just a perfect fit. Where, you know, I had tried to do like other simpler things with uh, with like I asked, uh, I wanted to do um, I was selling a ton of undergrounds, man, a fuck ton of undergrounds, like so much to a point where it's like. Who like where <laughs> Deltona Cigar House or Deltona? Like what? They're selling not Ligas, you know, like what? Uh, these other guys aren't selling that many. Like they're way bigger. I, that doesn't even make any sense. And so I was like, Hey man, I would really like to make a special one for me, you know, like a, a store exclusive. And the response yeah. I got was ha 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 ha. Like, okay. Like, ha ha ha. Great. Yeah. So, you know, that was kind of the end of, of, of the relationship at that point anyways. Right. So, I, uh, I turn around and, you know, like, I'm like, well, I'm going to make my own cigar, man. Fuck this. I want to make my own shit, you know? So when I went and said, hey, I want to make a cigar. And we were only going to make one blend. So my brother blended a cigar that was the Broadleaf. I blended the Habano. And I'm like, well, mine cigar is really good. He's like, well, mine's really good. I'm like, fuck. Here we, <laughs> we started with the Habano, and then we released the Broadleaf later. Okay. Um, at this point, Greg didn't, doesn't really blend that much anymore. Uh, I don't know why this just kind of happened over time. You know, I'm kind of a control freak, I guess. I don't know. I want to make sure that I feel good about it. So, but, but we're forcing him into more responsibilities. He's, he's, uh, he's been making more calls and stuff and checking in with retailers and stuff and all that other stuff. All, uh, all that, all that happy. I like to call that getting kicked in the teeth, which is a lot of fun. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because if you deal with 300 retailers and realistically 30% of them are kind of your go-tos, that means you still got to call uh, 210 that don't give a fuck, <laughs> you know, right. and, uh, you better check in, man. You know, mm -hmm. this industry is crazy. You will grow if, if they, if you establish a relationship, right? So even if it, if it dips a little bit, you can bring it back, right? Hey man, what's going on? How are things? Whatever. You know, uh, there are guys, there are guys and brands that as a retailer that when they leave the brand as a broker or a rep or whatever, and they focus on a new brand, guess what? The brand that they just left, that's going out the door. You know, we're going to start yeah. focusing on other stuff. Yeah. So yeah. do you have uh, brokers or reps throughout the, uh, the nation right now? I don't yet. I actually have, but I have two that uh, we're, we're working with. Uh, as like cool. they're really kind of in their infancy so i'm working with joel in texas uh, he's doing like oklahoma kansas and it, that's interesting for me because joel's extremely happy like so happy to a point where i'm like how much of this is bullshit you know like is he really that happy 
And when you meet yeah, guys, yeah. other retailers that have worked with them, it's like, man, they call him salt of the earth, Joel. I'm like, okay, so I guess it's legit, you know, uh, but he's a really, really nice guy. So we're excited to work with him and see how that kind of develops. And, uh, and then, you know, for me personally, like I have uh, one guy that he used to be a, a sales, he used to work in Cigar Hustler that I'm grooming into the state of Florida. Uh, cool. So you know, same scenario where I have access to all these cool guys, Matt Booth and all these other dudes. I have access to really cool reps too, because I'm in the state of Florida. And yeah. a lot of them, Peter Hernandez, Mike Denny's, uh, you know, shit, man, there's a whole list of them. Jeff Groover, you know, where I can sit down and say, hey, I, here, what do I got to do? What does it take? You know, what does it look like? And you get these perspectives of these guys and you say, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to formulate my own plan and really start, start kind of doing that. So um, it's a, it's a time, it's a, it's a very intricate process because I don't want to set him up for failure. So we're kind of devoting one day a week to him going out, having a route, starting local, checking in, checking in, checking in, and really starting to kind of build that flame. And once it's really established, then I'll have him slowly start to expand. You know, sure. once I, so what I did was I brought him into PCA and, you know, it was kind of a confidence builder. It cost me money. It, it, it didn't, he, you know, I had a good conversation with him and he's like, so did I make you more money? And, you know, do I do good in sales? And I said, Chet, I got to be honest, man. His name's Chet. Awesome guy. Like if he walks into the room, you're like, Chet's awesome. Chet, Chet's fun. Right. Yeah. I said, no, man, you didn't make me any more sense. That's not what this is about. This was about you coming out here and understanding, hey, I can do this. You know, sure. hey, I'm approachable. People will have good conversation with me. A lot of the guys, a lot of people that came up to us during the show. And uh, well, I got Joel in Texas, bro. I'm sorry. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> Seats <laughs> taken. Uh, Seats taken. So, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of those guys, they were going to buy from us anyways. Right. But what it did was it, uh, multiple platforms. It gave me the opportunity to talk to media more. Right. And, it, you know, it gave him the ability to understand that, look, I can do this. You know, you can go into places and get the nose and deal with all the bullshit and continue to work. Right. So that's what it was all about for me to bring him. So he loved it. And, you know, it kind of reignited him, like gave him some confidence. And like, that's what I'm a big believer in, like putting the pieces together showing people what they're capable of and then showing them that they're, they're further, they're even more capable of doing things than they even fucking realize. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, all right, go sell. You go do it. It's like, no, that's not how that works, man. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So like, so how uh, you overall, how, that? sorry, I was, gonna, I was just going to ask quickly, like uh, overall, how do you feel that PCA went for you? Like, did, did you like, you know, make a lot of progress by going on the show yeah man pca went great dude like it's uh, you know again the the, the same scenario kind of entails like you know kind of what you're going to do in numbers and we definitely hit that number for sure uh realistically what you look for is the dividends that pay afterwards you know like the the relationships that you built the, the knowledge that you gained and how you take all of that moving forward there there's no way to quantify by the snippet of your sales if it was worth it for you to be a PCA. Because would I be happy with those sales for the entire year? No, not at all. You know, was I happy that I didn't lose any money? Yeah. You know, was I happy that I made some money? <laughs> sure. You know, yeah, I was excited yeah. about all those things. But what I was more excited about is I opened up new accounts. You know, I had guys that knew who, who we were, uh, have heard about the brand. And they were excited to take us on, right? That was fantastic. I was excited to talk yeah. with some of you guys. You know, like all of these things are really what formulates and makes it all successful. So you can't quantify it by looking at anything. In a <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. No. David, it's uh, <laughs> Smith. Smith, Mike Smith. <laughs> Jeff on Kevich. Jeff on Kevich. <laughs> So I may have missed it. Uh, uh, Peter says, Skip and Pravada have been beefing on Instagram. What's, what's going on there? Uh, Skip and Pravada have been beefing on Instagram. I don't know how much I call it a beef. You know, I think that uh, there was a particular morning where Skip woke up and he chose violence. 
you know, okay. he, saw, <laughs> he, saw, he saw a combination of things that had happened. I mean, uh, uh, Brian Descend uh, said uh, that he was uh, the, he was not boutique. He was the craft movement. Okay, and he yeah. was part yeah, of bit. craft movement. And that's kind of hard to say to somebody hmm. when their brand name is called Roma Craft. So, you know, there was and that. Craft is boutique. Yeah, and, and they're actually crafting. They're, they're actually crafting cigars. Yeah. So, that, so you know, um, like I don't, uh, you know, I, again, I'm a, I'm in the same scenario where like I don't really begrudge anybody. I think that everybody sure. kind of has their own vision and their own ability, yeah. and you know, I think that Brian has done a lot of good things as far as exposure and really kind of create things. Um, sometimes he's a little lippy, you know. Sometimes skips a little lippy. So a little bit. I'm all for that. Like, hey, whatever, chirp away, guys. You know, have fun. Um, Spice things up a bit. Yeah, uh, that Dab was kind of destined to be a grudge match in some way, shape, or form. Like, there should have been an exhibition, it right? Was, at some okay. point, you know, uh, right? I I think that there were other combination of things that had also happened that day that really, really kind of set Skip off. Uh, I think that Davidoff made a cigar called Monolith or announced Monolith. He made a Monolith. It's fucking yeah eight years ago or some shit. And he's like, okay. And there was one other one too. And he's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Um, so there's all that. And you know, what's really kind of fascinating to me is like, I, and this is on both sides, which I find extremely comical. It's like some people have no idea what's going on and what the other person is saying, but yeah. they're, they're always, they're always in the comments section. Like, yeah, man, fuck that guy, whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> you see it on both sides. And I'm like, yeah. but you don't even understand what's no. going on like you're just gonna back them regardless yeah just yeah. just look at the comments like oh interesting that's an interesting take you know okay. so Sometimes um, you get random people that just jump into beef and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about they make videos about it and everything that shit happens <laughs> recently, so yeah man yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah. been a lot of that a lot it's of brothers out here doing that shit it's a lot, lot of brothers crazy. doing that for sure it's bringing up yeah. shit from five months ago it's, <laughs> dude it's pretty crazy man and like I don't know. I can be angry enough. I don't need encouragement. Like, stop. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, so, I don't know. Like, you, I, and like I said, you see it You see it all the time. I'm like, get away from the comment section, guys. Get away. Just stop. <laughs> right I've, uh, I've heard Skip talk about how he, he wants to kind of cap Roma at a certain size because he doesn't want to just the challenge of economies of scale, you know, when you get to a certain sure. point, it just gets yeah. a lot more expensive margin shrink. Um, is that a challenge? Like you foresee, you know, you're, you say you're 10 years in, um, you know, I, I just didn't know if that was something at all coming up as far as just how, like, what do you envision Pisania to how big you want it to be? I was Fucking bring me that challenge, please. I will, <laughs> I will happily take that challenge. Like, Oh man, I don't know what we're going to do. Like, uh, yes, I'm in. If if that when that day comes, it when that day comes, I will tell you this. I look at everything as a challenge, and I accept the challenge. So, I don't believe in stopping. I don't believe in you know uh, giving up at uh, stopping at a specific number. You know, global dominance is definitely where I'm gunning for in the cigar industry. So we'll see exactly what that entails. You know. Who knows what that means? I could, you know, there there could be a, a route for bundles that I have to produce, you know, and and start gearing towards that market, and working with somebody else to do that or whatever, you know, or maybe I want to take on acid. Fuck them. I don't know. <laughs> you know like, I honestly don't know, but I know that I I know that there's one thing I want to do, and that's fucking win. Period. Mm -hmm. Do all. you? Do you feel as though that if you got to a point, like I know that they say everybody has a number, one of the recent trends that we've seen are a lot of people like Booth, like yeah. Caldwell, you know, they oh, have sold yeah. to larger monoliths. Do you think that, you know, that would be something if maybe under the right circumstances, or is this something that you do want to pass down to your kids if they want it? No, I would always take the number. I would take, I would, you know, like if, if something existed and the math was right, I would take it. You know, the real question would be at that point is, am I on board still as CEO or something where, mm -hmm. I, where I'm salary based and I continue moving forward or sure. <clears throat> am I just uh, no competition for X and then I come back and blow that out of the water? Yeah. You know, um, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, right. something of that magnitude, whatever. Hey, you know, all right, well, you got three years, bitch. Yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> to, to do what you, know, you can. You know, should have should have took the deal where I was included or, yeah. or whatever, you know. Um, I think that that, you know, look, I was never passionate about cigars. I, maybe I am now. I'm still not as passionate about cigars as I am the well-being of my wife and kids. So, sure. so like it's, it's, it's just yeah. that simple. I would love a Learjet. That's, I would, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going, uh, you know, I want fuck you money. I want, you know, I, you know, I want to have that ability to make sure that they're good for life. Right. Sure. So I'm, yeah. I won't stop until I hit that or I die. It's going to be What's one of them. until you get your own closet at PCA. If that's what you're trying to go for. Yeah, right? Whatever the yeah. case may be, man. There, but it's, I, I'm not stopping. Not any, not never until I die. Are you, so. uh, are you a five year club guy or do you like, look, whatever is happening today, this is what I'm working on today. Like, I, I, do you look for in the future, like, okay, I need to plan for this? Or you just like, look, I'm just going to make whatever cigars crack in, whatever pops right now pops. Well, I wouldn't consider myself a five-year guy because uh, I'm 15 years into retail and 10 years as a, as a wholesale. Uh, but I am definitely more visionary. You know, I am more uh, hindsight, or I am more looking ahead as far as what. Okay, what well, what is the next step? Well, like, what does that look like? And if you think about it, it's all about this crazy level of vertical integration, right? So it's like, hey. I am a retailer. How do I get better as a retailer? Let's build an online store. Okay. How do I get better next? Like, Hey, let's go make a cigar. Okay. How do I, you know, how do I make more exposure for myself? I'm like, Hey, let's build a podcast. Right. So like, you know, how does the wholesale distribution company continue to build? It's like, Hey, let's help more friends and let's sell their cigars. Right. So, you know, it, it's like, it's, it started here and it's like, dick, 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 you know, like, right, it's right. Not like no, yeah, it's not like, hey, how do I dominate at retail? You know, it's like, how, you know, it's like, no, no, no like, I want to go like kind of like this, take take on everything, and then like crush it at everything. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you know, and do it the right way, where I can walk in any room, I can look anybody in the eye, and I never screwed anybody over, right? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I mean, you see that in this industry too, bro. Like, there are fucking dudes. I'm like, oh, shady as fuck, man. And like everybody knows everybody knows like you can yeah. see it i don't care how nice your fucking facebook post is it doesn't matter <laughs> you still know you know that bullshit meter goes off i know exactly what you're talking about man. So. right and again it, look you go back to these brands and you go which which brands are the most successful the ones that have the most authenticity there's a seven thousand dollar humidor that was released the the cigars are not worth that price right but listen, both of those brands said, I don't give a fuck. We're going to yep. donate mm -hmm. this money. And if you like the cigar, buy the cigar. And it's like. But it was just like you were saying before, though. They're not selling to us. That that has nothing to do with us. Right. Right. All. Right. And and not only that, but they flat, but they didn't say, hey, this is a uh, 110-year-old tobacco that my <laughs> great-grandfather they didn't do that. Right. This is pre-embargo. Right. We brought this over with us. Right. They said, hey, I wanted to blend a cigar special for this guy. This guy blended a cigar special for me. And everybody's yeah. like, well, we're down. Authenticity will always be successful. Look, you know, another yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, argue, I argue this all the time. Like, look, the, and Skip gets so pissed because I use the Raptor as, as a comparable and he's a Raptor guy. I go, the Ford Raptor is not worth what it sells for if you look at the base model of the F-150. They're practically the same car. What are we talking about? A turbo, a couple of different things for technology. Doesn't make much sense, but we sell them. Mm -hmm. And yep. people fucking want the Raptor. So, you know, like, don't, <clears throat> they didn't say, well, you know, we went back and we found, we developed this brand new technology yeah. of the finest. We are going to do well to make this car. That's why you're paying this. Yeah. They didn't do mm -hmm. all that bullshit. It, 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 if they did, it would be the Cybertruck. Right. Right. So why did right? So why did we get to, why did why did why did why did you buy this car? Because it's bad as shit, you know. Yeah. Like I was I was driving home today, and like I have an older Hellcat. I don't like I love my Hellcat, but it, and it makes me happy. But it's not like I'm like yeah. 
But every once in a while, you get some kids who are like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and like, damn, like, that makes me feel good. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, like, yeah, like, yeah, you know, this is awesome. Yeah, so, it. so it's always that? somebody that, you know, that wants to have that $150 cigar in hand to say, I have this brand. You know, I'm smoking sure. this brand. You know, you know take oh, yeah. these people out. You know, it's going to be like that. Yeah. But we're kind of, but well, we're talking about two different comparables. We, you know, on the consumer level of that person that exists, but on the other side, the brand owner that makes it, don't sell me the bullshit. Just tell me, hey, right, I made right. it, and it's badass, and that's why I'm gonna charge this much because it's fucking awesome, mm-hmm. and I crushed it, and I know I can sell it for that much. And yeah, if you don't like, it, it. don't fucking buy it. <clears throat> Dude, I had a I had a friend who had a Hellcat, and he he actually modded it, so he they got that thing up to like eleven hundred fifty horsepower or something Ooh. like that. And dude, he he eventually sold it. He's like that thing scared the shit out of me because he <laughs> said like that is a different kind of thing to drive as far as just like these the sheer power. Bro. That, it was sick, man. I never got to drive it, but uh, I got to see him drive it. It was it was awesome. So I bought this thing used, right? And about six months into owning it, all of a sudden I heard this rattle. I'm like, oh, that can't be good. Take it to my mechanic who's not really a like a performance mechanic. He's like, oh, your supercharger's got a bad bearing. I'm like, oh, it's going to be $10,000 to fix it. And I'm like, fuck. I don't, I don't need to hear this right now. I'm like, okay, yeah. how, do I, how do I get rid of this car? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I got to get rid of the car, you know, and I tell my son that, you know, I tell justice, I tell everybody, but justice actually says to me, he's like, you can't get rid of this car. I love this car. And I'm the fucking idiot that'll do anything for my kids. And I'm like, all right, I need to, now I need to figure this out. How am I going to keep this car? Cause I can't drop 10 K right now. Like it's not going to happen. So, no. so I randomly stopped by my barber for whatever reason because I want my haircut and I can't get an appointment. I'm like, hey, can I get a haircut? And he's like, no, man, come back later. I'll take care of you. But I'm like, okay, fine. So I leave and I pull up and there's this badass challenger and it sounds amazing. And his windows are down and I got a cigar in my hand. So I go, hey. He's like, hey, man, what's up? I go, where the fuck do I go to get this car fixed? <laughs> he says, oh, man, you got to go to the Mopar Mafia Lemon Chase down in Orlando. I'm like, okay. So I take it down there. And he's like, yeah, it's making a noise, but I don't know, like, you don't need a new one. Like, let's send it off to get it fixed. I'm like, wait, they're like, well, we can do that? He's like, yeah, we'll take it somewhere. It'll be like 2,500 bucks or whatever. And, you know, put ceramic bearings in it and you'll be good to go. And, you know, I'll install it. You know, you're out the door like three grand or so, something like that. I'm like, well, shit, that was a lot better than 10. I'm like, okay, let's do that. He says, okay, so it gets sent away. And he's like, do you want it ported and polished? Now, it's already got a shortened pulley on it, so it's already got 800 horses. Do you want it ported and polished? And we could probably get another horse, 100 horses out of it or something like that. And I look at the guy and I go, for fucking what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good where I'm at. You know, like, yeah. we already struggled to hook up here. Like, what? what like, now we're talking, we're going to replace, you know, parts on the motor and all this other. For me, yeah. To- for the, to spin more tire, like no, he started laughing. He's like, "Yeah, you're right." I'm like, "Okay, just make it so that it works, please." You know, yeah. uh, like mm-hmm. I love cars and I, I dig them and I like fast cars. I don't really know shit about them, dude. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. like I can tell when I'm having a conversation with a guy and they start rattling stuff. I was like, "I don't know, man. It's fast. I like it. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Shiny <laughs> thing, nice." Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think about this? I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. have you had any interactions with sanj patel mike i have i have i've had a couple interactions i've been to a shop a couple times uh but i usually time myself on my placement of statements so i you know like i'll sit down and i'll let him go on his tangents and then i'll just i i would throw a jab you know like and (laughs) you know and then all of a sudden everybody's like oh He's like, you know, and just kind of let him go back on to doing his thing. But yeah, he that, seems that's like that's how you got it. That's how you rock massage. That's, yeah, that's the blueprint right there. I just wait till you know, I usually just wait till somebody says something else and then he's like, but that doesn't make sense. And boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's the blueprint. Yeah. He's, he's you know, he's always been cool with me, never had any issues. 
very straightforward. He very, has his belief. Yeah. You know? So as like, yeah, what cigars outside of Pastagne do do you enjoy for yourself? Like whenever you have a chance to smoke a cigar for your for you time, if that exists, like what do you see yourself going towards? Dude, at this point, I smoke so much Pastagne, it's crazy, uh, you know. And especially with having the Connecticut, um, yeah. The only cigar Cause, cause that, you, you cover, you covered all the, put all the segments with the Connecticut now, like within yeah, your portfolio. Yes. Like I have completed, you know, like when your power <laughs> combined, I am captain planet. <laughs> yeah, Voltron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We all get together with the cars coming and, you know, Megatron's here. So, yeah. so there's that, you know, uh, I would say the only cigar that I really smoke on the regular, regular is the Neanderthal HN. Hell yeah. Uh, you oh, know, I, I love that cigar. I'll smoke two of those in the evening. Because where do you go after Broadleaf? You got to go San Andreas. Mm -hmm. You got to go San Andreas. Oh, yeah. So uh, those, I try and smoke other shit, man. I do. I'm just like, oh. God. You can mix in a little Baca <laughs> every now and then and get some Cameroon going. Yeah, no, I mean, like, look, the other cigars are great. I'm not saying that they're bad. You know, I enjoyed the Volstead. I thought that was a really good cigar. I enjoyed mm. the PAs. I love the intrigue. You know, I mean, we could the talk about Quin Quaginario. That thing's yeah, amazing. One cigar. of my favorite blends that Skip's made. I mean, like, th those are statement pieces. That, that was made out of Ernie's factory. You ask her, if you told mm. if you told Ernie to blend that shit again, I don't think he could. You know, <laughs> like this is not possible. Uh, you know, those all those cigars are great. You know, yeah. I just have an answer for all, uh, but I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go smoke mine. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, that's you know, that's just yeah. kind of cigar collectors gonna bomb. Don't bomb. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got uh, PPS. Okay, he's not a fan. Yeah. Yeah. How many you smoking there? You were talking about like the right home. Like how many cigars you in a day, man? In a day, on average. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My, my yeah. wife's out. like the one. She knows. On, on average, I would I would say uh, between four and six is my average. Now, but listen, if any of you motherfuckers want to pull blood work, I guarantee you I got you all fucking beat. I'm fucking ACLs, LDLs, fucking all of it. Like, I crush. I'm not a big believer in, you know, just not being healthy, right? So sure, sure. I fucking yeah. take care of myself. I'm not, uh, I'm here to be here for a long time, you know, or as long yeah, as I possibly well can. Until, the, until my genetic body says, look, dude, there's nothing else you could have done about it. It's genetics or genetics. But... You know, I, I, I weight train three days a week you know, and it's full body. So I touch everything three days, three times a week. Right. Uh, I cold plunge the other three days a week. Uh, you know, I sauna, you know, I haven't sauna lately, but I need to, I usually sauna, you know, mm -hmm. it's guy we call it the hot box. And listen, it's really funny because it's like a zip up thing where my arms can stick out and my head sticks out. It's on my patio and I'm smoking. And I'm smoking a cigar. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I've done, you saw that double dose. I've done podcasts in the sauna. You know? <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I do I all that. I, I don't know if I can do that in my sauna. That's a little yeah. that's a little extreme. Yeah. I, I do uh I do I do cold plunging, man. I, I'm kind of yeah, that I love it, dude. My my <laughs> wife likes it when I do it because I'm in a much better mood when yeah. I do it. Just okay. watch your timing, man, because, you know, I, there's two things that are important to consider about the cold plunge. Number one, if you, if you wind up lifting weights, don't do it right afterwards. Or, or you know, you get, if you're going to do it on that day, make sure it's hours later. Yeah. The, the, the theory of inflammation being bad, inflammation, like we hear all the fucking time, oh, it's anti-inflammatory. Inflammation isn't good or it isn't bad. It's just a thing called inflammation. Right. Sometimes it's because there's an indicator, there's something going on in your body. Right. Sometimes we work out and create inflammation. So mm -hmm. don't take it away. Uh, you know, and then like, I would do stuff like, I wonder how long I stay in this bitch. So I've stayed as long upwards to close to 30 minutes. And like to no. a point where no. my arms were dead, my legs weren't moving. And I'm like, this is it. 
<laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is not good. I'm going, you know. So just stay no longer than about six minutes. I think that's the maximum amount of time you want to put yourself in the cold plunge, just so you know. I don't know wait, how long you stay. How long do you stay? Uh, I mean, I did, I did the longest I've done at like 44 degrees, 42 degrees was like yeah. five minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Don't go, don't go past six. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I find it relatively like once you kind of get past the first minute, it's not bad, especially yeah. you can stop thinking about other things. Like if yeah. I can just, you know, if, if I start thinking about true. the day, all of a sudden that's I'll start think. I'm like, that's oh. true. Like bring that's it back, true. bring it back. I've had, I've had the same experience, man. If I try to distract myself, it's worse. Um, no, you got to okay. say, Hey, just relax, embrace yeah. the suck. Let's go. You know? I just haven't smoked a cigar yet doing it, so that's maybe Me that's either. The that seems a little more complicated because your hands, are <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good short. I'll make that as a short. I don't know. That'd be weird. Yeah, yeah do that. Do that. <laughs> just need a camera mount and yeah. a cigar holder on the end of it. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have my tooth by then too. We'll my see. boy, my <laughs> be, my buddy just sent me a post of Ken Griffey Jr. fucking smacking him out of the park, smoking a cigar. I'm Hell like, yeah, that's time. Yeah. My man. That's dope. Hell yeah. No. Uh, I gotta go uh, find it. And, you know, and he fo- Ken Griffey Jr. followed me one day on Instagram. I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. So I messaged him. I was like, thanks for the follow, dude. And I said, scene. I was like, mm, that's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's it. We can't be friends. Yeah. That's just the outcome. You that makes it look it's like have you seen people smoking your cigars? You know, you get like the Ken Lewis and you get the Ken Griffey's that you know the guys that smoke cigars on a regular basis every I've seen them smoking cigars, anybody like that? Uh I haven't seen any of them smoking it, no. Um not yet, but you know, that'd be cool as shit if it did happen. Like, hey man, love your cigar, this is badass. Fucking A. Uh Ed Reed's cool as shit. Uh you know, I met him at PCA, he's pretty dope. Ed Reed is cool as shit. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Guy Fieri is a pro. I've talked with him. Like Guy Fieri has figured it out, man. Mm. I don't know if anybody has ever walked away from Guy Fieri and, be, and not feeling better about themselves. Like he starts talking, I'm like, and he starts saying things. You know, like he's focusing on you and he's talking about you and all this other stuff. And I'm like, stop it. Like I don't. <laughs> you know, like, don't get in my head. That's all. That's all very nice. I'm like, you're fucking dude. You are. You're next level. <laughs> you dude, I, I, I know I'm, I might be alone in this on this panel, but I, I actually liked the, the Habana that he came out with. I enjoyed it. It wasn't like, it wasn't like mind blowing or anything, but you're was, alone. I know. I know. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's okay. Look, I didn't know. It could have been the worst cigar on the planet. The yeah. reality is that well, the cigar industry does not have a celebrity like Guy Fieri that has gone behind their brand and put in the fucking work to yeah. build it. Right. Yeah. So what yeah. does that mean? That means that th- culturally other people that aren't cigar people will go and buy his cigar. Right. And some of them will turn into cigar smokers. Even if they didn't, what's really more important is that our culture as a society actually just accepts cigar smokers, right? Yes. I remember, I remember Mario Lopez years ago. He did a, a Mario Lopez the Slater from uh, Say by the Bell. Yeah. 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 He posted him. he posted him smoking a cigar, and you'd have thought he threw a fucking baby out a window. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> holy shit! The fucking comments. Yep, that's bad, man. Like, like. You yeah. fucking parents have no idea, you know? Mm-hmm. So for Guy Fieri to kind of get behind it and really try and work on changing what he's really trying to do is make it actually more socially acceptable. We need more of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's and, it's and, you know, you got Guy Fieri with the hair and, you know, you got glass all backwards and other and that shirts and shit. And, you know, he's doing like, all things with the food and the eating and all that kind of shit compared to, to e. Slater who was saved by the bell on E.T. Like his, his, his audience is completely different. They're not looking for him to be a badass. They're looking for him to be a pretty boy. So a pretty boy smoking a cigar. All the moms that you know, grew up a sick by the bell lose their shit because he's like, oh, he's supposed to be wholesome. He's supposed to be wholesome. 
ultimate smoke a cigar. And that's why people freak out like that. I mean, maybe. I mean, the one crazy thing about Guy Fieri is Guy Fieri is one of those weird celebrities that hits four, all four quadrants. Like he hits every age, every gender, as far as how you categorize it, right? So like, there's probably a hand, only a handful of celebrities that can actually do that. And I didn't know that about Guy until I mm -hmm. said, oh, I'm going to meet Guy Fieri. And my sister-in-law, who's like 22 or something, Guy Fieri. I'm like, whoa. Like, you? <laughs> yeah. Like, what, yeah. What's, what the fuck just happened? And then you can, and yeah. then I can mention. I can mention Guy Fieri to a 55-year-old woman. She's like, oh, my God, I love Guy Fieri. He's like, you know, my son who's 10 knows who Guy Fieri is, right? So, you know, uh, to have that ability to, to to tap into so many people, you know, Mario Lopez's reach is so much smaller, you know? It's, well, it's probably now your your moms, you know, who, who watched him growing up and like, oh, he's so hot with the wrestling <laughs> <laughs> AC Slater, yeah, I know, I know you dug him. I know you dug him. Cool, <laughs> I beat him. I fucking beat him. Not today, ISIS. <laughs> That's right, Mario. So, so yeah, let's see. That's what's kind of important. Yeah. What, else, what else you got, Michael? Hit me. I've got uh, somebody was asking about the actual banding on Postan. Well, just the the logo, Postan. Yeah, explain you know, your about, logo. About the logo, like yes. what? Where's the meaning with the anchor and the P? Right. Yes. So, if you could tell by my last name, I am Polish. Uh, you know, one great thing about working with rights. Yes. Hey, there, there it, it is. is. There it is. We got it. Got the fireworks. <laughs> we got it. Fireworks, baby. One great thing about working with Skip is he's always taught me about authenticity and kind of leaning in towards who you are. So it's like, hey, man, just name, name it something. You know, you should be Polish. You're a Polish guy. I'm going to make it Polish, whatever. We don't have but, any of these over here. So so he sent me uh, his artwork, and it looked like – he's like, here's what I'm thinking. And he sent me some stuff, and it looked like Polish Romacraft. Mm -hmm. It looked like – I mean, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, un yeah. like I, I respect what you're saying. You know, that's yeah. cool. Like, you're right. I do need to lean into that. I, I you know, but I want to make sure that we are clearly different, right? There yeah. should, and there's still confusion to this day. I'm like, fuck, man. No, 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 we're not, we're, we're not the same company, you know? Like, I actually have a fucking retailer that still calls me to this day with his Roma Craft order <laughs> <laughs> to this day. And you know what's really fucked yeah. up is I, st I take the order. I take the fucking order and then I call Michael and I say, Hey, I got an order for you. Like, why does he still call you? I have no idea, but I'll take the order. So, um, Apple's greater than Android. <laughs> so <clears throat> it, it, was, um, it was to this previous comment yeah. about, uh, our microphone, uh, on StreamYard. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, so I started looking up more research and history about, uh, Pol you know, Polish stuff and there's a P with an anchor from World War II revolutionaries and they fought against Nazis and a lot of them had sticks and rocks and shit and a lot of them were killed but they fought believing in something and believing in their country and it, it do doesn't matter the odds we're going right so I was like damn man that's some definitely some shit that I can lean into because I am mm -hmm. I'm along this route of these bigger guys went in and they, they shut me down they slowed me down. They tried to do everything they could to suppress me. And they got way bigger war chests than me. But mm -hmm. fuck that. You're not going to stop me. Like, I'm going. We're, I, don't care. I don't care what you got. It's me versus you, and I'm going in, man. So we modernized it. We took the anchor, and we sharpened it a little bit. And that, that's how it was developed. And, like, the Habano and the Broadleaf, they have the, the Polish flag behind it. You know, as we're kind of growing, we're kind of gravitating away from that, just creating different images and stuff. Like, we've made that statement. Uh, but the P is really kind of the, the the symbol of to who we are. Mm -hmm. Nice, man. So Everything has to have a soul. Everything has to have meaning, right? So when War Bear was created, my employee walked in. He goes, oh, man, you should do one about the War Bear. You should do a cigar about the War Bear. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, dude, there was this bear. And, you know, he would smoke cigarettes. And he brought artillery to the, like, you got to look it up. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. 
So, you know, there you go. I'm like, okay, yeah, like, yeah, War Bear. Like, I, I love it. I, you know, like, I don't re really believe that I deserve any credit for any of it. I just believe that I'm around enough cool fucking people and I listen <laughs> to them. I fucking listen to them. So, and what it added then to, to your story, basically. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, the cigar is named Justice after my son. You know, it was it was made for the birth of him. You know, no. uh, like it all has purpose. And then I made these little one off cool ass things. They weren't under the Postani. It's like same scenario. So like I made a couple cool cigars in Matt Booth and made one with Espinosa. And but they weren't made at Nico Sueño. So I wouldn't let them have a pee. They're not going to be the Postania. They're going to be something else. Right. Mm -hmm. So I made a cigar called Who Shot Ya. Right. And it references some motherfuckers that didn't see me coming. You know, <laughs> um, uh, I made one. We the like that's that. it. So, you know, and, I'm, and I love Biggie, dude. If you came into my house, you'd see I got a little Biggie statue. I got it was all a dream and neon at my front door. And I got a huge uh, like the there was a, a Luke Cage uh, show where they had a, a painting of Biggie Ooh. with the crown. I got that fucking painting and uh, my friend painted the whole thing. And then she put the Postani cigar in his mouth. So oh, that's that's fine. That's fine. yeah, that's fine. I was, I was always, I've always threatened to, Hey, like, Hey, I'm going to take a picture of this and like make little posters and give them out. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what fucking copyright. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, so like, I just believe that all of it has to have authenticity. All of it has to have a soul. Like and, uh, another cigar I made called, was called bangering. Right. Uh, Growing up for me, like one of the best movies I connected with was Hook, bro. I loved Rufio. Man, he was like, I was like, that that kid is badass, you know. And like some of the shit that he said, where right before he dies, like, man, I just always want to have a dad like you. I was like, fuck, man, you know, like, yeah, me too, you know, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> you know, so like, I don't know. I'm just a big believer in everything. It's got to have a soul. It's got to have purpose. So we're at, we're currently Lutek was brought was. to Iran. He was. Shit. He was bought at a train station. Huh. And then yeah, and then the he was told uh, he's a Syrian brown bear. He was told that he uh, as he was kind of there, um, they started setting in rules that you couldn't have pets with you. So what they did was they made him a sergeant. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Great. So we're we're, cur we're currently in the last forty five. We we run three hours. I know it's it's fucking long, Mike. So I, if you have to go or whatever, you know whatever. But do, do what you got to do. But uh, if we go for three hours. Uh, typically, last forty five minutes, we talk about movies and like you know media stuff like that. Okay. What is your favorite movie of all time? <sighs> Damn. What is my favorite movie of all time? Shit, dude. Just like, well, gotta go. See ya. <laughs> yep, that was nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, man. There's, you know, I could tell you that I don't think that I could pick off of five that I that have affected are you, me. Are you a cinephile? No, are you a cinephile? Like, do you are you into movies? Are you into like media stuff like that? Sounds super creepy. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine if he just that. came out like I'm a Listen, man, I don't stay I don't hang, hang around in elementary schools or re, I don't know what you're trying to um, Anything that ends with file, yes, I agree. You know, I, I dig I I dig I love I, I I do love movies, you know. Uh that's the one thing like my wife does not dig movies. So there's this, there's that, which is always kind of fascinating to me. It's like, I don't know how, how did we wind up together? She's the best thing for me. I love her to death. I will do anything for my wife. Believe me. But it's so funny. Yeah. She likes reality TV shows. Oh man. Yeah. So that's always like when you're getting ready to like call it a night, but there's enough time to watch one thing and it's like, yeah, we're just going to put on the show. Yeah, I you know, uh, it's weird. She's not out here right now, but I was I would say this in front of her. Uh, you know, it's weird. Like we are, uh, we have this. Like we're both pretty easygoing. Like 
hey, whatever you want to watch, you know, like I always mm -hmm. got other shit I got to do anyways. I'm trying to learn Spanish. So I'll do that at night. And like, there's always, sure. I, can, I can always do other stuff too. And then I, and I, and I also try and engage and include myself in whatever she's watching. Right. Sure. So I can tell you about every fucking housewife and every fucking platform. <laughs> I, yep. I, know, I know enough about them. Right. Yep. We went, she went on this love is blind tear and, you know, we watched all the seasons, <laughs> you know, so I, I like to commit to like her bullshit is my bullshit. My bullshit is her yep. bullshit. Now she feels a little differently on my shit because I'll watch Tokyo Vice, where there's a lot of she's like, I'm not reading that shit. Everything's in Japanese, you know. Yep. Uh, and right now I'm on the Shogun Kick, which takes me back to yes. when I was a kid because I yes. watched that when I was a kid too, you know. Um, You're still so, reading Japanese though. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I am. So she, so she was not really about those things, but she will try and commit to some of the other stuff that things that I watch. But like. Gotcha. The problem with the housewives is when one one fucking season ends, it's not like, all right, that's it. No, no, no. The next one's about to pick back up. I'm like, mother yep. fuck. So uh, we have had those. We every once in a while, I have the I call it these come to Jesus moments where I'm like, look, man, <laughs> what the fuck? What are we doing here? Can we just watch? Just give me something with with substance, you know? Like I like I love you. And I'm trying my best here, but I'm at a point where we got to figure out something, right? So, you know, normally if I say that, it's then that's where everything shuts down. She's like, whatever you want to watch, just watch it, you know, and like then I instantly feel guilty. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's good. She's she's good. She's good. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, you know, um, so, but, you know, she'll watch movies with me at, at times. But when it comes to movies that like that, I think are top five greatest of all time, you know, I mean, Godfather, killer, right? Godfather one and two. Um, I even like three, you know, uh, Heat, powerful so fucking movie, Braveheart, amazing fucking movie. Uh, yeah. You know, um, I loved The Dark Knight. The original, the, the Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rises, I, those yeah. were fucking stellar. I mean, I'm a huge Joker fan. So if you notice, yeah. like SBC 22, it's green and purple. It's green and purple for a fucking reason. I like the Joker. Ah. Yeah, again, cool, man. same scenario. Like everything has these little nuances, these little things that that give it a soul. The soul, of it. the soul to it. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the year, the one what before that. The, uh, Recent Joker, you, you, you feel that one, or, and, and that the new one is coming up. Someone's walking. That's not Joker. Walking. That's not Joker. Thank you. Thank you. That's, not, Thank you. that's not Joker. Look, look, man. Joker doesn't bathe his mother. Sorry, I'm out. <laughs> bathe his mother. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> they took a fucking movie about mental health and they made it the Joker. Like, stop it. I, I, I don't, Not I even don't that. They made two Scorsese movies and just slapped them together. That's, that's all they did. <laughs> and it's nah. going to be a musical, man. So you you got to love the Joker being in a musical, man. I know you're going to love that one when it comes out. Yeah, oh, I can't wait. The Joker is the guy that sets the billion dollars on fire and goes down sliding and says everything burns. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. That's my fucking guy. I'm like, yes. I dig that guy, you know. Got the Joker themselves, you know what I mean? That's the Joker. Like they all taking each other out and they just watching that shit. That's the Joker. Right. The Joker's the crazy guy that makes the alliance and then kills everybody anyways because fuck it. Like, yes. That is the Joker. <laughs> the Joker doesn't grab a sponge and rub his mother's back. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen. <clears throat> doesn't happen. Joker is not skipping the and shit like that. Yeah. Um, another one that comes to mind for me, Pulp Fiction, man. Love the movie. That's and right. I made a cigar called The Shepherd. There you go. Ezekiel 2517 is on the motherfucking band because you know nice. what? I feel it, bro. I'm, you know, there are times, especially in this industry, it's like, man, it's just, it's much easier for me to just take Mr. 45 here and just pop your ass. But I'm trying <laughs> real fucking hard, man. I am trying real hard to do the right thing. What's that? No. I did. I told that story already. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. He's like, you know, just like the guy in the gas station. Like, man, you're not making it fucking easy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I can just level all this shit right now. But you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna hold it back. I'm going to hold it back. So, exactly. So, you know, uh, those are movies that come to mind for me that I absolutely love. You know, we're in this weird place as a society where a lot of this shit's kind of coming out. And it's all about low budget production and just kind of being out because of these, because of the platforms. Like, dude, I was excited about Roadhouse. I was very <laughs> sad about Roadhouse after I watched it. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can see. I want me sandwich. Give me my sandwich, bro. What happened? You know, and but that just goes to show that there's no director, there's no good director on there. There's no good, you know, like you could have, yeah. they could have made that movie so much better, even with the lack of talent that was that was there. But there was one clear apparent actor, and that was Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm like, he's obviously an actor. You know, you could see that in the movie. So I'm like, but budget says otherwise, and we're just gonna fuck this whole thing up. You can't do, man. You can't make a movie from the '80s. And try to make that shit in 2024. It don't have to get that package quick. And you know, yeah. even with Jake, Jake, but it's like when I mean, he's snatching out somebody's throat and the fucking house is on fire and shit. You're not going to get that thing going. You can't, you can't recreate Stallone and Cobra. You can't recreate that kind of shit. Man. Yeah. Just, I agree, man. Tony, I would, I would tell you. To, to get whatever you think is going to fit your palate the best. I mean, the Connecticut cigar is obviously a, a, a Connecticut cigar has got more body. Habano is going to be sweeter with some undertones of spice and the broadleaf is going to be bold. You know, if you really want to try something different and they got it, smoke that SBC 22 war bear Corona Gorda. That's what I came out with last year. It's a fucking banger. So, you know, just whatever you think is going to, whatever cigar you're in the mood for, you know, is what I have the answer for. <clears throat> Dude, I'm so glad you brought up Shogun, though, man. Like that, that, that is like a masterpiece. I think, like, like there's, dude, yeah, the, the, the quality of the production, the direction, the act, like, just hits on. Yeah. All. So, is, so this, is this your first time where you've experienced anything Shogun? Let me ask you that. Yep. Okay. So, like, for me, I read the book when I was a kid, and I watched the original, like mm -hmm. from the '70s shit. Yep. And that was still really good back then. You know, it's going back to it and watching it again. What's a leaf that I haven't used yet that I'm looking for to adding in the light up? Probably San Andreas Claro. <coughs> Probably San Andreas Claro. Um, because, I, you know, I, I love San Andreas. The hardest part about it is how do you offset it? how do you offset the filler and stuff? So if, you, if, if something that's a little bit lighter, maybe that gives you the direction. Somebody was asking, like you think about using like Brazilian? Uh, Fred was asking that. Earlier. Love the way Glenn was described. Rapper, very good. Binder, strong enough to hold it together. Oh, you're just talking about like my media releases and shit? <laughs> anybody actually read that stuff, man. Sorry, sir. <laughs> 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 Our viewership for a bunch of nerds, man. So you gotta understand that we got a bunch of nerds that that really like get into the minutia of the gods. Man. Yeah, uh, well, you know when I give details like that, sometimes you know it's just I don't know. Like sometimes I'm bored. You know, like <sighs> okay, what's the rapper? It's Pennsylvania Broadleaf. You know what's you know or what's the binder? It's you know Indonesia. You know what's the fillers? It's Nicaraguan. You know. I mean, you want me to get on the details there? Some of it's Condega. Some of it's, you know, uh, what, you know, some of it's Dominican just for burn, you know. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you work with blends and I'm like, you know what? I'm not fucking telling you. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, like, I'm just not telling you. It's got the secret sauce. They're like, oh, it's, ma it's magic. Oh, magic. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, like, there's no rhyme or reason, man. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I, I'm just kind of, I don't know, man. I just, I'm just about having a good time and trying to stimulate the brain a little bit, piss some people off and then just give them a hug say, it's going to be okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, 
yeah, that's my answer. That's my fucking answer. Um, what was the question? He's like, Sorry, can you give me more this. information than uh, binder made to hold stuff together? It was this. Yeah. It was from Mike Cigar Carpenter. He was asking about the press release on the Justice and like, you know, or I think it was Justice, right? It was the media release for that? Probably. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, just, you know, and Palmer does some of that stuff too sometimes. Like, he's just fucking around, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I give him carte blanche. I'm like, yeah, whatever you want to do, man, just go have fun. It's just That's me saying, hey, just relax, man. Just smoke the cigar, enjoy it, love it or hate it. But you know, find out. Yeah, yeah. Life's too short. It, you know, like it's very easy to 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 read something and then have this conceived notion as to what it is. And you know, mind is very powerful. You know, you can convince yourself of something that it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, red Coke sells more than Pepsi. You know, shelf space is everything. I don't know. Is there a rhyme? It also tastes better than Pepsi, though. So yeah, does it taste better because it's in the can? I mean, like. I, I like I like the yeah I'm I'm look I believe I'm a, I'm with you Michael I'm a, I'm a coke guy I'm a coke guy yeah yeah and, it tastes better so you know uh do, 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 do. oh okay thanks guys that's a compliment to both of us right <laughs> yeah I, I you know I'm not a big drinker um I know that was a shot for you but uh are you like are you Casamigos is that something you distro uh yes we do distro casamigos okay sure. so that was i started that on tequila but i've i you know i gra graduated into sincoro that for me mm. that's the one i really like the anejo i don't really drink it often though yeah no sincoro is a nice brand man we don't distribute that so uh it's been nice chatting with you and uh thank <laughs> you <for that. laughs> no, no. Uh, no sincoro is really nice man yeah. and uh <clears throat> the uh, one of my colleagues actually used to rep it out here one of my colleagues now but yeah, solid juice. I like it. They also did a lot for uh, like the big smoke events they would always be at too, which was oh, nice really? to see. Like, yeah, at least here locally, whenever big smoke would come out. I mean, I, I realistically drink probably twice a year, if that, well, you know, so sorry. <laughs> when I was behind the bar, I drank a lot more myself. Yeah. I try to keep it to just our, our lives and a couple of times every day. What about Patron? I used to drink a lot of Patron. Was that one? Is that one of yours? Or no? Oh yeah, I've been to Patron three times down in the Amazing. Hacienda. Man, love it. Big fan of what they do down there. It's it's crazy that a brand that does over three million cases a year worldwide can still have every bottle touch a hand, at least yeah. at least more than two, you know, before it goes into a box. So I I really respect the fact that they uh, they stay true to form too for being Pretty such fantastic. a big brand. Mm-hmm. So, John, getting back to Shogun, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> um, you know, what's really kind of intriguing about the whole, like, if you go back and you watch that whole thing, like, some of the things that Toronaga says, I'm like, that is so true. That's a bad motherfucker. That's a like, bad motherfucker. That's what I'm you know, do. I mean, he's looking at his son, and his son is talking about emotions and, you know, this thing. Well, what about this guy and what about that guy? He's like, like when are you going to learn, man? Yeah. None of that shit matters. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yep. like we're getting from A to B, bro. I don't care how we get there. We're getting the B, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and then like seeing the people who he does confide in to do specific things because they're not going to go out and echo it and they, they achieve it. And like all of that stuff, all those intricacies, like it's fucking it's marvelous. It's absolutely fascinating. So. Yeah, man. I want to I want to go back and read the book. Like, I mean, it's, it's I, yeah, I mean, it, it, <clears throat> the show's been so amazing. I'm like. The book's got to be super good, so you know, and it's pretty pretty accurate to the book from what I can remember. Like, this is pretty fucking good. Yeah, you know, when I first saw the the hen hung up and nobody took it down, I'm like, why haven't why hasn't anybody taken it down yet? You know, and then they did. So I'm like, okay, yeah, yep. Mm. Yeah, but there was, that, that guy died, and that guy was used for something else, right? Yep. So. Yep. My yeah. wife was like, my wife was like, should I watch it? And I was like, no, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> like, she, she doesn't like war stuff, you know, like she likes reality stuff too. And, um, but I was like, dude, the, the guy who gets boiled overnight, you know, I'm just like, I'm like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it's for you. <laughs> We're going to cook him. Yeah. Slowly. <laughs> slowly. Yeah. It was, that was an intense one, man. 
that whole yeah. thing. Like everybody, not even they're showing the bits and pieces, but like you, you listen to the background and everybody's expecting to watch it is going on. That's like TV right there, man. You can see that shit. The crew is mm-hmm. supposed to come back at the end, so we'll see if they if they hold true to that. Mm. I think that's how that happens. I vaguely mm-hmm. remember. They changed a couple of things. They, they, they changed a couple of things, like, uh, I don't want to, like, but, you know, the stuff that's happening. Uh, I'm trying not to talk about Twitter, not going to suck. Yeah. They played a little bit with that in the last episode, so. Yeah. They, they're tweaking a few things in it. For sure. So Mike, do you remember uh do you remember the first cigar that like really stood out to you like when you first were getting into the hobby? Was there one that just like clicked for you that was like, oh man, you know, this is something like we talk about sometimes, but just like this is one that like, oh okay, this is why people do this. Um, okay, so I could tell you that like again, people came in asking for cigars. So once I saw that that was kind of the route that we were going, like, all right, I need to learn cigars. So what did I try? I tried an acid Cuba Cuba. And I'm like, oh, I like this. Oh, I like the way this makes me feel, whatever. And then I'm like, all right, what's the next step? Cigar of the year, Casa Magna. Let's um, smoke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I turned green. I vomited. It was terrible. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Like, I'm like, this is it. It's over. It's over. Um, so that one really kind of stuck with me. And then I was like, hey, well, better commit, better keep it going, you know. So I think that the, the biggest cigar that stood out throughout the progress was definitely that Aquitaine Adelato. Okay. Because you know, when I smoked that, I was like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? This is amazing, mm-hmm. you know. And at that point, my nicotine tolerance has surged, right? You know, I love it when somebody asks me, he's like, <laughs> does it mess you up? I'm like, <laughs> wouldn't know. Person, I have no fucking idea if this is gonna mess you up because none of it messes right. me up anymore. Yeah. Like at this point, we could probably filter out the nicotine from my blood. Mm-hmm. Put it somewhere. <laughs> we could vape it. Get a battery. <laughs> you know. Um. Uh. So yeah, I would say that one kind of stuck out. Yeah. Gotcha. What other media stuff? Cigar hound dog. Like is there a movie? What we? I know you wanted to ask movie stuff. Uh, so mm. what about like uh, sports? Are you a, a sports guy at all? I'm a, I, a little sports, yeah, a little bit. Uh, football is my shit, man. I love football. Yeah. I, I was born in Boston. Oh boy. Okay. So I was always Bad times in, for you. I was. It was. It was a rough, rough few years. We barely <laughs> made, made so after like a magnificent twenty five. So so <laughs> I'll tell you a couple of quick things, right? That you know, I and I do like basketball, but not as much as as football. And but getting back to football, so I was a Patriots fan. My son's born, right? And I'm a, I'm on the waiting list for for season tickets. I was born in Dorchester. Um, here we so, go. Um, go Cowboys. There it is. So when my son was born, I wanted to facilitate local, right? Like, Hey, I want to be able to bond with him on something. Right. So it was, I'm kind of dead smack in the, the state. So it's either Tampa or Jacksonville. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tampa's cigars. Yep. So I was like, Hey man, like I'll go get season tickets and you know, we can go watch the Bucks together, or whatever. So we became Bucks fans. Um, you know, then then a few like four years later, my man Brady came down, right? So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. And, perfect. And Gronk, and then Gronk and came Gronk, down. Man. So, but here's what I will tell you. So, like again, I'm a big believer in like cultivating the fan and building those rela- building that relationship, that bond. So we would do all of the rookie camps and everything. And you know, Doug Martin is running right ne- right here. Like this is awesome. We're sitting down on the bench. Yeah. Mike Evans sits down next to us. You know, nice. I'm like, <laughs> like it doesn't like they, you know it doesn't get much better than that. You know, uh, yeah. Jameis Winston would never fucking talk to us hmm. ever. Hmm. 
And I'm like, man, fuck this guy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of the other guys were always very accessible, you know, even like even still Vita Vea. Baker Mayfield last year was awesome. Like, you know, we, I talked with him briefly and he, you know, they did autograph signing and stuff like that. Um, but when, but when Brady came in, um, you couldn't have, you didn't get access. All of a sudden everything was gone. Everything was mm-hmm. shut down. Like, you know, oh, COVID plus uh, Brady, like, nah, you know, they, they kept their fucking distance. You know, they did everything they could do really kind of to seclude you. Now, um, some adults are fucking crazy, dude. You know, like, yeah. Oh shit. What was his name? Badass wide receiver, uh, Philadelphia Eagle came to Tampa and then he finished. I think, he, uh, then it starts with a D. Damn it, man. I can't. Hmm. You, uh, he was a uh, uh, Jackson Deshaun. Uh, uh, I'm fucking blanking out here. Was but Deshaun was, Jackson on Tampa Bay? Uh, no. Um, shit. Somebody, somebody gotta have it in the chat. Someone in the audience. <clears throat> Jamie, pull up the Google. <laughs> Philly Eagle wide receiver. Let's see. No, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun? Yeah. yeah Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun. Okay. Yeah. So um I forget the like, Tampa Bay. So like the first couple of years they were trying to do these autograph things where people the, like the players would come over during a practice and they would just randomly sign stuff, right? And I'm next to this fucking old fucking I say old, but like this mid 40s overweight fucking degenerate loser guy and he's like fuck the John John Jackson's a piece of shit and I can't believe he's here and like this is ridiculous and blah 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 and I'm with my uh 5 year old kid at the time. I'm like, okay, dude, and whatever. Dude. You know? yeah. um, and sure as shit, the guy who's gonna who's coming over to sign is Deshaun Jackson. And all of a sudden, this guy's like, "I love you, man. You're the best." And like, oh, oh god, dude, oh, like god. what in the fuck? You know. So they started to segment away from adult autographs, and they started doing just kids stuff. And I'm like, that is fucking great because I, like, I'm the type of guy like I don't. I don't need it. I don't need a fucking signature. I don't need any of that stuff. I just want my kid to be like, wow, that guy came over. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That You know, I want them to have a good time. So like as, they've gotten way better at that, that sort of thing, which is really cool. But um, yeah. So like, I like football a lot. Uh, I do like some basketball stuff. What was really cool is oddly enough, I'm not a Celtics fan that much. Uh, I'm a heat fan. So, um. I know that that's crazy. That's sacrilege. I know. I know, dude. I have arguments with my cousin all the time. And he's like, oh, But why the heat? Okay, so, you know, Florida. As, like, I never really had any exposure to sports um, when I was a kid. Like, I started getting into it as I started getting older, right? Okay. And, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to go to some heat games. So, you know, I'm like, hey, let's go try this. When I went – the absolute best time I ever had was mm-hmm. at a heat game. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. High five and everybody's going nuts. Like, you know, there was no, I don't know. There was, there was, it was just, a, I felt really good about it. Right. So sure. I, I kind of, you know, I, you know, and that we're talking about Dwayne Wade, you know, and Shaq days, not, not the big three or anything. Like that. Yeah. Like this was right when Dwayne was young and in his infancy and he, they were supposed to lose, you know, in the playoffs and all that shit. Right. Um, so that was when I was like, Oh, all right, fucking yeah, go, go heat. Um, so, uh, I saw that giants thing and I started to twitch a little bit still. Yeah, pass. no, that's why I put it on the screen. I'll put so, it, I'll sorry, put it on Michael. again. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for you. Go giants, bro. Uh, you always, re- always remember the one, you know, what's funny about that fucking game. The year, the perfect season is, you know, I got a buddy of mine who's a giants fan. And I went to, to, to go watch a Super Bowl game, <sighs> hanging out at the bar that I worked at, and you know everybody's feeling good, and all you fucking Giants fans were hiding. Yep. But oh, when, no. oh, but no, no, god no. damn it, when they fucking won, they, everybody came out like go blue, oh, yeah. go blue. I'm like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there, so, was, there was no Giants fan that thought they were going to win that game before yeah. the game, except for the ones that were playing on the field. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I have learned I learned from that game that whenever I have a dog in the hunt, as far as Super Bowl is concerned, I'm staying home. <laughs> Me too. My house. If, Tampa, if Tampa's going or New England's going to the Super Bowl, I will not be around other people because 
Uh, you know what? Yeah. Not, I don't Emotion, want to, emotions are too high. Emotions yeah, I, are too high. Yeah, I don't want to lose you my can't, You can't have that on public display. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, it's a lot, man. So my son is, uh, you know, like he's – following youtube and all about basketball and stuff like that and the bucks are the bucks basketball bucks are playing uh the heat right and i'm like i'm sitting out on my patio smoking a cigar and he's like Giannis, go bucks i'm like whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> take your bullshit and get the fuck <laughs> out of here like we're watching the heat. like we're talking jimmy bucket buckets motherfucker hemi motherfucker and he's like oh whatever <laughs> And um, he's like, and this is the beginning of the playoffs where, you know, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are supposed to win the whole thing and all this other stuff. Right. All right, bro. Fuck, fuck you, dude. Heat. Go Heat. So all of a sudden, you know, Heat start winning these games. And he's like, oh, go Heat. And I'm like, oh, look at you. Huh? <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> How quickly the tides have turned, you know. That's yeah. funny. He's bandwagoning it. So so now, so now I have now I've created this monster of a Heat fan where we go to Magic games and and he's wearing Heat shit. Hmm. Oh wow! Like, okay, damn. You know, oh man! He, he meets Paolo Banchero in a fucking Heat in a Jimmy Buckets jersey. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I can make this shit up, man. You That's know. Wild. I'm a Mavericks fan, so I hated the Heat back then because 2006, <laughs> Dwayne Wade just just. And I, you know, I give him props. He he basically single handedly beat us. I mean, it was insane, and we deserved to lose. Um, but do that 2011 series, the revenge tour for us was just awesome. So now I don't care. Now now I'm fine with the heat. It's fine. Like it's, you, you, it, you always got Jake Durant. You always got Dirk Whiskey, and you always got Jake Terry. Man, you can always live on that one relationship. Yeah. Now the beautiful thing in the world. Man. So yeah, enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, that was that was a cool J. series. Barea. Yeah, J. Barea, the, Barea, the most we beautiful all, thing that ever happened in basketball. Look, look, we need to either do a GoFundMe or we need all these chip in, and we need to get him a badass mic and set him up because your shit's crazy, <laughs> oh, bro. Your shit is crazy. You're all over. The place. I'm gonna. We're gonna go. Go, we're. I'm talking. Like, I'm talking like DJI, <laughs> like something fucking legit. Hey. Some badass. Stuff. Hey, yeah, I'm. I'm down. I'm fucking down. I want you to. I want you to have the best experience. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, did you hear the uh, the Chiefs didn't pass y'all's tax for the stadium? So Dallas is trying to woo the Chiefs to be the second team in Dallas. That's insane. I didn't hear a, about that. This is bullshit, dude. Uh, you don't buy that for a fucking second. Come hey, on. man, send Patrick back home. Send him back home. Chiefs might not no. stay in Kansas City. So we'll that's see. No, dude, that's that's so that's stupid. Not, There's no not, fucking way. Hey, man, teams have left. Teams have left for that exact thing all the time, dude. That's not that's <laughs> not gonna happen. I'm hoping it is because I'm ready to renounce my Cowboys fandom. I am just I'm over the whole organization. I so. love all the transactions you guys made this season, off season. It's been crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We we re-signed a long snapper and we got a linebacker. No one wanted. Do you, oh, you also cut a linebacker that you didn't want anymore either. Did yeah. anybody tell Jerry that, uh, hey, hey, man, free agent acquisition? Like, something. It's oh, March. He <laughs> it's March. Dude, he, <laughs> yeah. he, doesn't give a, he doesn't give a shit about free agency, dude. He, he, he doesn't care about re-signing people. It's all the draft. It's a, I'll tell you, you what. You know what, though? With how good they draft, I, I don't blame him. To be 100% honest. No, I, you put your thumbs down, you but I mean. You can't win a Super Giants Bowl. Fan, only I through would, the draft. No, but as a Giants fan, I'm very envious as to how the Cowboys have drafted over the last, like, 10 seasons, bro. Yeah, it's, it's done us real well. Well, I mean, you just tie your uh, buggy to the wrong horse at the end of it. That's the only problem. It was Look, Romo, then it became back, and, you know. That's not the – I don't think that that's the problem. Here's the, here's the harsh reality. Let's take the, this one little snippet. You guys got a fucking coach – that got his ass whooped by his fucking replacement with a younger fucking team. How do you yeah. not take that guy and say, all right, bro, pack of shit. That's mm -hmm. it. We're done here. Yep. You're yeah. done. They obviously we, knew what they were doing in Green we, Bay. We got our ass kicked at home. Yeah. At home. The, like, the we got scared of the season. Yeah. 
Dude, Here's the crazy part. First though, the, loss at home. In the postseason, if you obviously if you're a Dallas fan, you felt uh, uh, otherwise. But if you've been watching the NFL the entire season, you knew they were fucked. You're like, Green Bay's oh, going to yeah. mow them the fuck over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Dude, I, I don't even care that we're bad. It's not that. It's just the level of mediocrity when Jerry Jones says we're all in and we re-sign our long snapper. That was our big move. <laughs> In free agency, the, the the shitty part is that you know Michael's right as far as the drafting and the team that you actually have is actually really good. I think that yeah. there, there's other pieces there that are fucking significantly better. Yeah. Michael Parsons, sick. Yeah, man, he's ridiculous. He's the second coming of LT, man. No, 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 no. no. Let's calm down now. <clears throat> hey, the guy's a beast, hey, man. And hey. I don't. And I like Dak. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I think he's actually a really good quarterback. He makes really good decisions sometimes. You know, I just think that you, you got to set these guys up for succession, man. You know, uh, yeah. when when it's when when we're past midseason and we can't get everybody to move at the same time on offense, so we have added. Here we go. I mean, dude, <clears throat> something is wrong. Something is significantly wrong. Yeah, that cadence is just embarrassing. That was that that might actually be the nail in the coffin. Right now. <laughs> I, I don't know how we say that Dak is good enough in one breath and then also say that in the next and say that that's okay. But yeah, sure. I think so, Zach I'll Dak is I'll tell you why, because I don't think that that's something that he has commanded. Because he isn't the guy that makes those decisions. Like the offensive line, the offense coordinator, the offensive coaches, the head coaches, those are the guys who are supposed to get everybody on the same page. And if you don't have everybody on the same page, that's not your talent's issue. That These guys have been playing football since they're fucking 10 years old. They know what they're doing. Why isn't everybody else doing it all in unison? That's because failure of leadership. And you're starting to see this evolution. There are some exceptions to this, but the reality is that, you know, we no longer dig – you're a 65-year-old, obese, not give a fuck head coach. Doesn't work. Sure. It doesn't work. It works for Andy Reid. He's the anomaly at this point. But, like, you want your coach in better shape. Uh, you want him slightly, you know, you want him more captivating. You want to get behind him say, I believe in this motherfucker. And that does not exist with Mike McCarthy. Not, no. not by a long shot. No. No, I agree, but there's a reason why Cliff Kingsbury, who comes from a really good system and a championship pedigree system, also doesn't work out as a head coach, too. And sometimes it is it is the leadership aspect. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also because of the fact that you're you're tying yourself down to a singular piece. And, like, Dak isn't capable of making the same transition when it doesn't work midseason as somebody like Mahomes. Both very talented, both have been playing for their whole entire lives. But Dak doesn't command the team the same way that somebody like Mahomes does. And it doesn't – like it shows the way that people act. Because Travis Kelsey was dog shit most of last season. But that first playoff game, there was something that clicked on and that dude became a monster for two straight games. He kind of did it through the rest of the playoffs and and the Super Bowl run. But it was like there were players that weren't playing well. I mean – they had they've had poor Kadarius Tony from the Giants who was had the most drops in football for a while and they were just like look you know he's injured he can't play the hey, guy's a mess. We're, we're scratching him he's the guy's a mess yeah the like guys. this is definitely an issue personality mentally whatever it is yeah they like, sent him back play. yeah he's gone yeah he's yeah, gone he's, he's out of there so. you know yeah I mean that's true I mean realistically what what Dallas really needed is they needed CD Lamb to get with Swift if that if that had happened. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> oh, the roof. I, I just feel like you put that much talent on a team it, it's almost like what McCarthy inherited in Green Bay and then also couldn't win with you know so there is something to be said about well he did win with it that's, he, yeah, won he won once with it that's hard he, he won, won. Yeah. yeah yeah I just I just yeah, again, it's not because we suck. We've sucked since yeah, I – Yeah, I just think that it's system. I just it's, think that it's system. Yeah. You know what? Like, look, if Eli Manning can beat Tom Brady, it's system. I understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, I, uh, I, come on I, I, Dude, come on, bro. He's not 
everybody says that as like the catch line, especially the Patriots fans, but they don't talk about the games leading up to that. They don't talk about like getting knocked down 25 times against San Francisco who had a better team in 2011 than the Patriots did. They don't talk about going to Green Bay and winning in Green Bay and beating Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Tell me your top, tell me your top five quarterbacks. My top five quarterbacks of all time. Uh, it's, it's probably got to be Brady in there at one. Okay. Um, right. If not two, it's got to be Manning in there. Uh, he's definitely a better overall quarterback than Eli. There's no okay. doubt about That's it. Hating. Uh, okay. Montana. Three, three is three is arguably Patrick Mahomes already at this point. And I, I mean, if he's not three, he's four or five. Like there's no way that he's not already on that list. He's going to eventually retire as the greatest quarterback of all time. If he doesn't sustain like a major injury or something like that, there's okay. just no way. And then Drew Brees, for, for, uh, Drew Brees never, never won more than Ooh, once. Like there's a problem there. You know, if you can't make it twice. Okay. I would Bro, say Joe Montana. Joe Montana. What? I feel like I feel like Montana could be five, but five. Yeah, he could be five. He's top three, in my opinion. He's top, He's top three, three, dude. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Um let's see. Tony Romo. No, definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. I, I would go Eli before <laughs> Rockcaster. Come on now. R- Romo, couldn't, Romo couldn't actually get it to the dance. Uh, Aikman? Aikman. Aikman's probably in there somewhere. I don't know. There's a lot of good choices there because you have like Bradshaw. You have right. Aikman. Okay. You have Elway. All right. like there's a lot of good ones. But I feel like doing more with less is always kind of a bigger deal too. Okay. So you just named eight. You did not say Eli. No, I wouldn't put him as like the best quarterback of all time. No, as as a matter of fact, you actually mentioned the one guy that he was playing against twice in the Super Bowl to beat. Brady's a better quarterback than Eli. He just wasn't on those days. Right. So my point is that you don't have to be a great quarterback to win, right? You have to be great to win twice. Okay. But we're talking about just winning once. You don't have to be great to win. But he won four games on the road both times. I mean, that is that is so incredibly hard against really good opponents. Like, that 2011 well, Niners team was better DJ. than the Niners <laughs> team last year. All right. But my point is that <laughs> Dak doesn't have to be Mahomes to win a Super Bowl, right? He, he doesn't have, have to be. be Mahomes, but he arguably might have to play Mahomes, which means that he has to play better than Mahomes plays on that given day. Sure. So it's, and we've already agreed that da- Dallas drafts well, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So that means where is the breakdown on the team? The breakdown on the team isn't on the talent. And we already measured a quarterback saying that, hey, quarterbacks don't have to be fucking all-time Hall of Famers to win the whole thing, we need the system to work well with the team, right? Well, Eli's definitely a Hall of Famer. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. You can agree on this, right? No, I can't. I'll never agree on that. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. So then are you worried that the Giants have a better team than the Patriots did in 2007-11? Because I'm trying to figure out where this goes here. Well, I'm just bringing back to the basis of the conversation that you were saying that Dallas isn't the problem with the necessarily the system of the coaching. It's with the pieces that are on the team and i don't think that the pieces are on, that are on the team are actually the problem i think that if you know what uh, quarterback strengths and you know what your offense I said one piece one piece i complimented their drafting and i said yeah. that dak is the main problem yeah well i think that honestly right. you could i just believe that you can still succeed with that guy still being at the helm of quarterback is kind of my well own. i just don't I, think he has the clutch the clutch I respect. I respectfully disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> like that. 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 That's where I come from. I come from the fact that I've watched somebody who's mediocre all season ascend in the playoffs. Dak has never shown me that. Okay. 
That's that's where I go. He has to be greater than what he is in the regular season. He's great in the regular season. Yeah, probably has better numbers than most of Eli's regular seasons. Eli's a different dude in the postseason. Do, do the Giants have a quarterback this season? Who's their quarterback? I mean, he got injured <laughs> midway through. But yeah, they they did. Who is it? Still Jones? Oh, coming up this season? I yeah. mean, unless they yeah. draft somebody, it's going to be Daniel Jones. Yeah. I like that Tommy guy. What was his name? Uh, you like DeVito? Yeah. You like, yeah. You like Tommy Tommy Meatballs? Yeah. The, guy that lives, the guy that lives with his parents, I'm like, yes, let's go. Yeah. I was that yeah. one, man. I was As a maf- mafia consigliere for his agent. <laughs> Had no idea. Start, was, hey, guess what? <laughs> Dude, you're uh you're I up. mean, I, I mean, you know, I I don't know. I just I look, you know, like I know that this is a, a, a terrible comparable, but Dan Marino is your question answer there. Um, like I have, you know, I have tortured myself as far as coaching my kids, as far as flag football. And mm-hmm. you, you can see the kid. there are kids that are extremely great at football, right? They like, they're very talented. They're just very athletic kids, right? We lost them. <laughs> he's gone. Um, he's, you know, and then you have kids that are kind of in the middle and then you have people that are totally lost. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know that if the, the proper systems are in place and you can win everything with, with that team. Right. So, you know, your quarterback doesn't have to be the most athletic, doesn't have to be the best, doesn't have to be the best team leader and all of those other things, but you need that leadership to exist somewhere else. And you're seeing the evolution of the NFL where that leadership is your head coach. And and my argument is that your head coach, he's got to be drinking six cups of coffee, like Dan Campbell, slightly Jack saying fourth down and fucking 30. We're going for it. And everybody's like, yes, we are, you know? So it didn't really work out though. No, it, it didn't, didn't really work out. It didn't. It didn't this year. It didn't. And you know what? It it was it was solely on Detroit, man. So many drop balls, dude. Dude, yeah. I, dude, I, they, had I, they had it in the bag. They had it in the fucking bag. Yeah. You know, I just I, I feel like coaching can definitely get you to a point, but at the end of the day, right? Like it it does fall into the quarterback who has control of the ball every single time your team has the ability to score practically. Like that is it's the most important position on the field for but a reason, the, right? In that scenario, the quarterback put it right on the fucking money. And they yeah, were drunk. Here's, oh. here's, here's, he here's the linchpin in the whole thing with Dak, though, man. And I'm sorry, he's a he chokes. He chokes. So he can he it's it's not about even the fact you can have a good system. You can't have a quarterback who chokes and Dak chokes. It, it goes for me, it goes back to one simple thing. It's belief. Right, it's just flat out belief. If the whole team believes mm-hmm. they can do it, they're gonna do it. You know, and I think that even when it comes to Dan Campbell and, and all those things, I think that a lot of the team believed it would happen, and then some of them had doubt at the wrong time, right? Sure. And be- because of that, and because of that, they lost. You know, like man, the one team that like when Tampa started rolling, like well, it's over in Detroit, man, because I thought for sure that I was drinking the Kool-Aid and I was like, I'm ready to see it. I want to see Detroit win the whole thing. You know, um, like I, I, I dig the system. I, I like St. Brown. I'm like, you know, the guy who has the list of all the people that drafted were drafted above him. Like, that's my guy, you know, like, Oh yeah. I'm gonna be like, I'm going to show you what's up. So, um, you know, to see them shudder, I was like, Oh, dude, so sad. Uh-oh. So, like, that's my, that's always my argument. You know, uh, a quarterback doesn't – if Dak actually fucking believes in themselves and believes in the system, I think that, you know, they would actually win. It's kind of my point. Yeah. And fuck Eli. I love you, but fuck Eli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we always get to live there rent-free. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, just temporarily. I let it go after a while. It's, just, it's more – like, for me um, – I don't I love know. the Patriots fans. I just uh, – no, man, honestly, I, I, I'm i not held on any of it. You know, it doesn't it's make – It's fun to talk about. 
Yeah, it's it's just like it's it's just one of those things. Like I can we can rip about politics too. Like all of that shit is it's all entertaining to me. At the end of the day, like I don't care where your stance is, you know. Like it's all good as far as I'm concerned. You're allowed to say what you want to say, believe what you want to believe. It it doesn't bother me. I'm not like this guy is so fucked up with his views. I'm like whatever. I mean, realistically, I like, I don't like any of them. I think, you know, I'm just, a, I'm against, yeah. the division, you know, like none of them help me at all. So f- fuck them, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and are no. Cubans actually worth yeah. it? No, they're not. The answer is no. Hey, look, a cigar <laughs> question. <laughs> 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 the fucking who would have thought that? Jesus they Christ. The last 45 minutes where the media and sports or some shit. What do you want from me, bro? I'm just, you know, I'm just doing it. <laughs> what do we got? Two people watching? Three? No, dude, we're hanging on to like 40 or so. 40? Yeah, we had about 40. There's yeah, nine 40 people the watching there. Something. our Hound Dogs channel. <sighs> some people fell asleep, well, I'm sure, with the, you know, with the stream on. Hey, we've talked. We've it's talked okay. football. It's okay. It's okay. Most popular okay. sport in America. It's okay. Yeah. But uh, but we, we have reached the three hour mark. I, I think feel like that, it, I, I feel terrible because I feel like I was telling EK that is we need a new mic for him. He's like, fuck this, I'm hitting mute, and he hasn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody can understand me. I just gotta get a new mic. I mean, you. Okay. You. All right. I'm sorry, dude. I've been joking for like <laughs> For weeks, bro. I've been getting roasted. Before. I will, I will, but I, I will chip in for a mic if, like, you tell me what you want to do. Like, we will, we will make this work. No, it's not good. Sure. It's not good, bro. What I'm is? What are you? Are you off of your phone? Is that what you're doing? Did anybody understand that? It's I think a, he tried to blame it on the Wi-Fi. It's okay. an Android thing, you know. Okay. Streamyard, Streamyard hating on Android. We we know that. Would the, the DJI yeah. transmitter work on him, like the Mic Two setup? Yeah, yeah we're right. gonna we're we're gonna get him lined up here. Okay. Lined up. All right, look, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. Tell me where to Zell, bro. I'm in. <laughs> I'm well, in. thank you, Mike. <clears throat> thank you, Mike, and thank you for being on tonight, man. I think that yeah. we uh, we did some great work, at least for the first two two and a half like two hours, hours for DJ. Phenomenal, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but hey, uh, we'll definitely have to run it back and do it again, man. Thank you for putting out this great cigar, and uh, yeah. I had I had a great time smoking it again tonight. Yeah, the justice is dope. Check it out. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Great. Like I said, man. Looking I know. Forward. I know that this shit looks I, I like see, hang out and smoke cigars or whatever, but the, like yeah. as far as me is concerned, this shit is hard work. So I really appreciate yeah. it, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come on with you guys. And you know, look, whenever you guys want me on, I'm on. You know, happy to do it, bro. Yeah. Happy oh, to yeah. do it. And we will oh, talk yeah. about whatever. I don't care. You know, we can talk about other people's cigars too. I'm like, let's. I'm down with all of that. So. I think we talk about the 2011 uh, New York Football Giants Championship Super Bowl run next time. We'll do <laughs> that. Fine. We'll go line by line by line. That's fine. Let's do it. Straight hands and beast. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the tuck season though. Straight hand had already retired. That was 2007. Oh, that's Alrighty, right. Guys. I look right. like Straight hand right now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Straight hand did it. You look like you do have the straight hand gap. <laughs> uh, that was the tuck year. <laughs> Everybody is at the top. It's at the title. Postanya. 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 Yeah, I think I think I think Mike, just with your candor and just with how genuine you know you are, yeah. just coming off as you, you've gained yeah. some fans tonight. So thank that, you. And that's, that, man. Know, I, I, I hope that. that helps you for sure. Yeah, man. I, I thank you so much, dude. I I really appreciate. Like I said, I appreciate you guys, man. So thank you for giving me the opportunity and the platform. Anytime, bro. Oh, yeah. Open invitation. All righty, guys. Thank you again. We will catch you all in two weeks. All right. See awesome, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Thanks for coming Thanks on, man. Thanks, Mike. See ya. Thanks, <laughs> See y'all.